Scotty Kramer here. Alongside of me is Natalia Diem. Natalia, are you ready for today's event? Oh, I'm so excited. Yesterday was a great day and a great show to watch. I can't imagine what's going to go down today, Scotty. Well, we're getting straight into it. The first heat that we're going to be dropping today is going to be a woman's heat. Now, there's going to be three riders in this one. It's going to be Duda Penzo from Brazil. It's going to be Sarah Lampert from Long Beach, California, and Sage Thunstrom from Hernet, California. So we got three riders. They're going to get about 10 or 11 minutes to get on the course and be able to show the judges what they got. But let's just talk about it technically. You know the... The event today, it's not like one of those um, events where it's going to be cutthroat. The, everybody's just having fun on this one. So let's get Jam 1 going shortly, but everybody's getting so ready to go behind us. It's awesome to see. The energy here is amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about what you're expecting to see from the, from the girls today. What I'm expecting to see, uh, what I saw yesterday in the prelims, and the, the, the Bloom Jam, sorry, was amazing. I saw some girls eyeing up and practice some grinds, and I'm excited to see what they pull out. Yeah, the Bloom Jam was so cool because the women didn't have to do qualifying yesterday. They only had to do the Bloom Jam because they had fine, they had a, enough riders that would go straight to the finals. But the men had qualifying yesterday, it, and it was an unbelievable event, and we are so excited to get this one going. So any second now, guys, it's about to go down. But let's talk about, you know, the rest of the course and everything that's going on behind us. This is not just like a straight up park course necessarily like there's a lot of different stuff on here we have rails there's wall rides there's a, a lifeguard tower on there it's the bloom obstacle like you as a rider i mean let's talk about that to begin with you're up here with me you're not riding right now unfortunately not i've got mad fomo today oh my god the course looks like so much fun but unfortunately i'm out with injuries so i'm just here to cheer the girls on and just have some fun with you. Well, we're going to have the best view out of everybody, <laughs> so it's going to be awesome from up here. But any second now, we're going to get this going. As you can hear behind us, the crowd is getting so amped up. They're ready to drop the first group. It's going to be amazing, guys. So. <laughs> So let's see this. We have six jams total today, just to let you guys know. There's six jams total. Now, it's going to go women's, men, women's, men, women's, and then men. And um, it's going to be 12 riders for the, for the men, and it's going to be 10 riders, I believe, for the for the women. So, um, yeah. And it's going to be different with the amount of jams that they're going to be doing. Like, the, there's only going to be three riders in this jam, so it's only going to be 10 or 11 minutes. So... But we're going to be dropping the first rider right now. It looks to be due to Penso. So let's yeah. keep an eye on this. We got the uh, course and being taken up right now. Here's Duda dropping in. And so how it works as well, it's ride until you fall or max 30 seconds. And then the next rider drops in and goes straight away. Correct. So that meaning 10 minutes that they're going to be riding for, they're going to get a lot of trips to the course today. So it's going to be, you know, a lot of game planning of how you're going to, you know, do your runs, right? It's like you don't want to do everything in your first run. You want to make sure that you kind of spread it all out and you can get, you know, a, a good amount of hits to the course, but be able to get you know, the judge's attention every single time you're out there. Absolutely. You don't want to exhaust yourself in the first few runs. After watching the men, I think they were averaging five to seven runs per heat. So that's a lot of time riding. That's so much time riding, especially when there's only four riders out there. Because if somebody messes up their trick, like after the first or second trick, you're going to be riding in 30 seconds. But we have Sarah Lamper on the course right now. Sarah has been a figure in women's BMX for a long time now, which has been so great to see her out here. She's got a very unique style. She likes to do a lot of grinds and stuff. Oh, there we go. There you go. go the combo. <laughs> nice. Uh, looks like she's going to go for a feeble to Smith. I think that's what she was eyeing up also. And then when she does her foot jam whips as well, she does it with the inside foot. Yeah. So it, it looks extra cool as well. It looks pretty cool. So next on the course, we have Sage Sundstrom. She's 13 years old. So cool to see her riding, and she's got such an original style. Absolutely. This is the first time that I've met her in person, and she is just ripping it out there. I was so excited to meet her and talk to her during practice and just help her out with some of her runs. She's going to kill it. Yeah, because she has, like, an ability to flow around the course really well. She's not scared to do the airs and to mess around with, like, tech combinations like that. Oh, that would be so cool be able to fake you around and hop back in. Absolutely. But I guess that's what this, like, kind of contest is set up for, right? There's so many different riders here that there's going to be so many different styles, you know? Oh, look at that. Dude, I just hit the, the gap from the lifeguard tower to the smaller driveway box, like a step down. And that's what I love about this course is that there's so much street that you can do it, but also park and go high and boost it. So 
yeah, the like alternatives and the various that you can do oh, is great. Oh, oh, you see her hands on that? <laughs> that was oh definitely a bit of a scary one. That was crazy. <laughs> That's like the worst feeling as a BMX rider. You throw bar spin and your hands are trying to find the grips. <laughs> You're just like staring down at the flat bomb, like, all right. Oh, we got, we, we, it's either I'm going to be down there gracefully or, uh, yeah. I've done that one wishing. way. I've just missed my hand. I didn't even try to grab back on and I just took it straight to the ground. It's the worst. There's nothing worse than that because then your momentum carries down on the transition. And look at Sage doing that big air to that bang. Oh, straight up onto the rail. Whoa. Just like we were talking about, she, she rides a little bit of everything, which is so cool to see. Let's see what she has over here. And she's brakeless as well. Like, I've never been able to ride brakeless. Oh! And that's exactly what we were talking about before. Yeah. Once that hand misses, it's hard to gather yourself and get back on. You're right. The crowd is cheering her on so heavy right now. Seeing get her back up on her feet. Oh, that was a heavy hit right there. Because she missed both hands, and she kind of went down in like a Chuck No-Hander. She's taking I saw, a trip off yeah. the course so right now. We'll, uh, we'll I saw her doing it in practice. It could be a little bit of nerves playing a part in that, and your hands are a bit shaky. So uh, she's 13 years old. Yeah. 13 years old. Like, I, I started young at 16. I was, man, I couldn't even imagine. But we got Duda back on the course. Let's see what she's got. Ooh, Ooh nice. that was nice. That was cool. Yeah, I guess we'll talk about the obstacles that they're riding over them as well, because there is three specific obstacles that were designed by the brands involved here. So you can see the Bloom Lifeguard Tower right there, the pink one. Yeah. So cool. There is so many crazy stuff that's been happening on that setup. Um, then you can see the dumpster over there. That's the Colt Crew dumpster. And there's also the Rad Share, the, the wooden plank. The jumbo size cinder block. It's like an like original BMX ramp when it first all started, isn't it, yeah. Scotty? <laughs> it, it's just like a, a jumbo version of it, which is super cool. But here's Sarah back on the course. Hopefully she goes back to that feeble to Smith. We'll see. Double I like that. Into the little quarter, yeah. That's a pretty cool use of course because it's like... Oh, oh and that's the foot jam yeah. we were talking about with the inside foot. Wow. It definitely makes it a lot harder to get back over onto the bike. Too. Yeah, I think she got one yesterday in the bloom jam, didn't she? Yeah, right? she did. The crowd went nuts after she pulled it. So, But now this is where it gets tricky because Sage took a, uh, a step off the course. So now we only have two riders that are in this jam. So... Uh, we got to make sure that they get enough of their energy back before they drop in. Absolutely. With only a max 30-second run, you only get a 30-second break before you have to drop back in and do a whole other run. Yeah, so it's, it's like back-to-back really back like that. Because that, that's the tricky thing with the jam format. It's like it could work to your favor if you get all these attempts on the course. But, you know, if you're a rider that's like maybe a bit maxed out and you're like, oh, man, I, let's get this over with. And, and you yeah, still got absolutely. five minutes left. And there's, only, and there's bike malfunctions or something like that. Yeah, and like, that's, that's when I get nervous and scared is like, you've just maxed out, you're feeling a bit tired, your energy's low, but you're still sending tricks. Because that's the spirit of BMX right yeah, there. Absolutely. It's, everybody does it. Every person that is on this course gets in that, that zone, and that's the reason why they are at the level they are. But here's Duda mixing it up, using the pegs right there. Nice feeble grind. Oh! 360, and she hung up back wheel right there. She did, but that's the first time I saw her do that, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, so Duda is from Brazil. So just showing you guys, people from all around the world. Natalia, she's from Australia. You might have known from the accent here. So it's cool to see BMX bringing together so many people. Yeah, it is. A, I love BMX for that and the community, community that we have. And we're all just so friendly and supportive of each other. I just saw Sage get back on the course, by the way. Oh. So I just saw her get back up on the deck. So that's a really good sign because that, that was a scary crash. And that's what we were just talking about. We, we don't want to give up. We're always down and, like, ready to go again. Yeah. It's hard to keep riders off the course. I'm telling you, I've seen it so many times at these contests where the riders maybe shouldn't ride. You know, like they're, they're, they're in a compromised situation, and it's really hard to keep them off of it. Oh, so Sarah's waving that one off, so it looks like we're going to get Sage back on. Let's see how she recovers from that crash. Here we go. The crowd's right. going, going for her. Yeah, the crowd is getting amped up right now for her. Hopefully so she can respect. get some redemption on the bar. I think I'd she's love going to see for it. it. Yeah. Here it is. Yes! Yes! There we go! She got it! <laughs> <laughs> the crowd just got so loud for her. That was so cool. Just like getting that oh. off your back, like getting that redemption off of a trick that takes you out. Oh, there's no oh. better feeling. The relief of it, and it just gets your adrenaline pumping, ready to go. Absolutely. Look at how well she's flowing around the course, though. Like her bike control at such a young age is amazing. So Very close good. to the Barsman disaster.
coming towards the end of the run. I wish you guys could hear the crowd right now and just get behind her. It's just like uh, us sitting up here. Like it, it, it almost gives you like goosebumps, you know? It does. I wish I was out there with everyone. Yeah, I, I wish you were too. I mean, no offense. I love having you up here with me, but it's always fun watching you ride though. All right, Duda with the feeble grind. Can she get the redemption? Oh! I think maybe with a little bit more speed, she definitely would have yeah, had it at I that think, time. I think the feeble grind is like the Achilles heel of that line right there, yeah. right? Because you want to get that feeble grind, but it's eating up the speed for it. You definitely want to try and keep the flow throughout this course, or else it can get hard to yeah. uh, pedal and get well, your speed back. We seen it yesterday. So many of the riders trying to get their line together. Oh, Sarah just got the 360 in the background. Nice front disaster. We were working on that one in practice, so I'm glad she got that line. Oh, cool. All right, she's hanging on. What's she gonna end this run with? You think she's gonna go for the foot jam whip again? I hope so. Here we go. Here we come. All right, on the bank. Oh, oh so close. Yeah, so she crosses Can Can before she goes up. Yeah. That's technical. That's technical to do when you're riding up a bank like that. De definitely a hard one. I've tried right. doing in jam whips and it's hard. It's hard, it's super hard. All right, Sage is back on, let's see. Going to the Bloom Lifeguard Tower. Oh! That time slipped off the back of it. Yeah, but, but also makes... that quarter is very, like that takeoff is very mellow. So it, it is like more of a hop bar than Yeah, your, your body's leaning back necessarily than leaning forward like a quarter pipe because it's not as steep. I've definitely found it more tricky doing it that way. And that's cool seeing her do it both because like, yeah, the transition makes you jump in the air when you're doing the bar spin on the quarter pipe. But when you're doing it on the bank, that's all, you, it's all power and technique. You have to know what you're doing. Absolutely, and control of the bike like we were talking about earlier. There we all go. Right, come on, let's get this. Traveled all the way from oh! oh! She's happy, she's right. smiling, she's up ready to go for her next run. Yeah, well, so that was her last run oh! on the course. So I just, I just got word that this is, the, that was the last runs right now for everyone. So it's gonna be Duda's last uh, impression for the judges. But we have Sarah left, and we also have Sage. So we'll see what they bring to it. Hopefully, Sarah can get this foot, foot, foot jam whip. Absolutely. Here we go. Oh, the 180. Oh, nice. She's got nice. that rollout. And she rides brakeless, which is cool and to see. And four pegs on as well, yeah. which is cool to see. Definitely. OK, so this is the setup she was doing for the foot jam whip. Can she get it? Watch her leg cross over, guys. Stepping over. Oh. The angle looks good, but it just was a little too deep on it. Oh, man. So where, the way that the judges are scoring, is it just overall impression, Scotty? Let's talk a little bit about yes, that. Yes, the overall impression, you know, and it, so what that means is they want to see you ride everything, right? They want to see you get as many tricks as you possibly can. You can mess up. It's not the end of the world. Of course, if you don't mess up, amazing. But the overall impression is definitely going to be trying to ride everything out here. Doing the, the, oh, she was trying the she was trying the truck driver yesterday in the blue jam. Yeah, she, she couldn't get it. So I was hoping she was going to be able to pull it today. It's definitely one of the bigger tricks that we're seeing out there from the women. So it yeah. would have been cool to see. As a truck driver is such a cool trick. Like. When I learned that one, I thought I was the coolest guy at the skate park. Honestly, I, I, <laughs> I was so proud of myself. It's a, it's, it's just to be able to do a 360 and sit in the bars at the same time, like, it's so hard to describe, like, what a trick means to, to somebody who doesn't ride BMX, but, like, hopefully she can get it. Oh, the lean once again. So close. It also doesn't help that there's not much deck to land on. There isn't. So and there's not much of a roller. Pipe. Yeah. So for, for like a flyout, it's definitely one of the harder flyouts. And you can tell how she was leaning on her side. When you're coming out of a steep quarter pipe like that, it's hard to get it to level out. That's the hardest thing about it. So that's why she was leaning to her side the way she did. So. Five minutes starting now. Right. So that is going to be it for jam number one. We're going to let the riders warm up, and uh, we're going to send you guys to commercial real quick, and uh, we'll catch up on the end of it.
right, we are back. We are back. We are getting ready for jam number two. There's a lot to talk about, guys. We have a lot going on over here. So, jam number two is going to be a men's jam. And now, one thing I want to talk about is there's two riders that actually had to step out of the contest today, and they were two of the top riders from yesterday. 15-time X Games gold medalist Garrett Reynolds, and also the man who got silver just behind him at this year's X Games, Felix Frankenberg. They had a rough yes. go. Uh, oh. Felix, his wrist, he had like a reoccurring wrist injury that he had surgery on. He ended up jacking it up. Garrett Reynolds, he thinks he might have a broken foot. That's crazy it's to terrible. see. It's crazy to hear. They killed it yesterday. It's so like disappointing to see they had to pull out, it but is. it gives the opportunity for ne the next two riders to exactly. you know make a name for themselves and do the best that they can do. Because the guys could have stayed in the competition, could have took the prize money, but they said, nope, we're not doing that. We went out, put the next two guys in. So they end up putting in Johnny Rakes and Ben Wallace. They took the spots. They get a chance to ride in the jam right now. So imagine that. They woke up this morning thinking they weren't even riding. And then it's like, <laughs> now oh, they're in. you're on. They got a chance for the top spot and, and, and the prize money. I think first prize is 10,000 USD. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and it's awesome to hear that Vans also support the women and we have equal prize money for the girls too. So Same prize money all across. Yeah. So $75,000 prize purse, which is amazing. Like, and, uh, it's not even like they're just handing out. Now, just for the contest, there's also a bunch of other ones that they're handing out too. Yeah. What, we had the the ride share award, which is going to be person who is like the it's like the best like community award with everybody around, right? Yeah. So that's going to be a thousand dollar award award. So it's amazing. We have the Colt Crew Award, so they're going to be picking um, a rider to give $1,000 to. Yeah. We also have the Rider's Choice Award, so it's going to be like a collective from a group of riders picking who did the best, which is amazing. I'm excited to see who the riders do choose for that one, because yeah, everyone absolutely. is great. And absolutely. Um, and then there's a uh, men and women's best trick as well for $1,000 for, for each, which is cool. Yeah, $1,000 each. That's yeah. going to happen directly after the competition today. So and then it's for gonna be a third, lot of yeah. third place is $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> like, this is the coolest thing. Uh, $5,000 for third place, $6,000 for second place, $10,000 for first place. Oh, I wish I was out there right now. I think $10,000 USD is even more for me in, in, in Australian dollars. So <laughs> that's a great prize purse. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, we're going to go over the Jam 2 uh, riders. We'll start talking about uh, who, who to expect in this one. Uh, it's going to be... Ben Wallace from England. It's going to be Johnny Rakus from uh, Ke Kennewood, Washington. Rim Nakamura from Japan. Unbelievable yesterday oh riding. Was nuts. And then we have Jordan Godwin, who absolutely destroyed this course. And what's so cool about that, we have four different riders. All four different, different riders. All different styles. Like the, the height that Rim can get is insane and then like the technical tricks that johnny rakes could do it's just like it's just two opposites of the spectrum but like seeing them ride together like oh it's it's amazing like i, I had so much fun just watching everybody ride yesterday like that's what made me so excited to like get in the booth today honestly like, scotty wait. i'm surprised i have a voice left to talk today because <laughs> i was i was out of my chair i was screaming i couldn't believe it but i would not want to be in the judges position today it's going to be a hard one to score yeah I, i'm so glad that we we're sitting here and um, Jan, Jan's about to start right now. First Here rider goes, dropping in. It. It's going to be Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace has been riding BMX professionally since I was riding BMX professionally, since like 2003 times. So uh, it's cool to see him still around, still relevant, still amazing. He was riding the high air yesterday, and he was doing a, a, a flares in Flair was at high. I'm hoping we're going to oh see that today. If he comes and pedaling that Also, that I hope in best trick that he rides, and he flipped the whole bloom obstacle. True. That Amazing. is insane. I didn't see anyone else even eyeing that up. <laughs> ben just flipped it behind us right there. Oh, my goodness. It's unbelievable. That's what we call a red carpet we go. Let's see how Ben, ben is going to get this going for the rest of his run. Far in, far uh, straight jump out of it. Sorry, excuse me. Massive five flare. Oh my god. That's a crazy trick. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's the only person doing that on the course this weekend. Yeah, you're right about that. And what's so cool is like Ben, he rides dirt. You know, he can ride street stuff. Like he could do, he could, he could use uh, rails if he needs to. But he can also do 540 flares. Like, 
such a well-versed rider. Absolutely. That's what makes him such a great rider is that he can literally adapt to anything. True that. So next rider in is going to be Johnny Rakus. Like we were saying, two opposite ends of the spectrum. I only saw this person uh, guy ride yesterday for the first time. And he absolutely kills it. It's, it's nuts. Like you oh. see, he just said Nolly Bar off of the lifeguard tower into the coal crew dumpster. And have you noticed that he rides with a fanny pack on as well? Like, does that not get distracting? I couldn't believe it. Maybe he keeps the rest of his tricks in there. He's got a lot <laughs> yeah, of them. Yeah, his bag of tricks right there. Yeah, watch him go up to the rail. Wow. Iris 180 double bar. Oh my god. I just can't believe his tricks like are like easy for them. Oh. Bar spin to feeble to crank arm. Awesome first run for Johnny. All right, our next rider. The next rider in is going to be the rider from Japan, Rim Nakamura. What do you? What's your favorite part about Rim's riding? That he is so smooth, no matter how high he goes. Watch him now. He's gonna blast this. Look at the camera frame. The camera is ready. Tuck no hander yeah, over the channel gap. It's not like he steers away from doing like the grind tricks. He just did gap to grind over the driveway box. He is an amazing rider. Look oh, at the height on that. Beautiful turn down, huh? Heads to the dumpster. In and He's also such a nice person too. I love talking to him. I love hanging out. Uh, I was actually thinking back uh, when I start riding again, I might ride his signature frame. So cool. we'll see how That's we go. Awesome. Yeah, his style is just so fluent. Like, uh, it's just so cool to see a rider from the opposite side of the world who's bringing his own just approach to BMX. And, like, everybody loves him. Everybody knows him. Really, really impressed with what he's got going on. So next rider in going to be Jordan Godwin. So smooth. Oh, his style is just so... Look at that. Straight up. Look at that. Feeble to 360 over the lifeguard tower. What? Wow, no, I think that was Nolly Hanger. It could have been yeah, a... Yeah, uh, Nolly Hanger, yeah. Nice. So stylish, like I said. He, 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 Ooh, Gap to Feeble. Feeble is when you grind with the back end. With. So smooth. This is trick after trick. The boys don't even flinch. They've yeah. got everything on lock. Yeah, I, when I was watching him ride yesterday, I was like, yeah, I think he's going to get in the finals for sure. Like his approach, just be able to use his style, right? The way you, everybody rides different, but to be able to look at the courts and have something on every single obstacle, like they're so different. Like you'll have somebody like Rim doing a decade out of the cold dumpster, but then you have Jordan like smithing the side of it, which is so cool how they, they approach it differently. Look Whoa! at that! So when, when I think of like goofy footed riders that like really, you know, take, take the goofy footed term and like, I'm not saying it's bad to be goofy footed or anything like that, but like, there's a lot. There, oh, there oh there's the flair we were talking about earlier. There's the flair. But like, being a goofy footed rider and being able to, you know, adapt to it and like use it in your favor by doing the big look back 360s, right? Stuff like that. I, Absolutely. And the one foot tables that they do. Yes. There's a couple go goofy riders that we have in the final say, like Josh Dove. Yeah. And his one foot tables, like insane. Uh, exactly. That's that's what I'm trying to say. It's like you take goofy foot. I've, I've even known people like my friend Vinny, he was a goofy footed rider. He switched his feet on purpose and, and became right foot forward. Oh, Look wow. At that. Johnny Vegas is an X up ride across the lifeguard tower to crank flip down. Wow. wow. The guys are landing pretty much everything right now, too. Absolutely. I can't even imagine. Crank flip. Nolly bar to the flat. Can you imagine jumping off that the flat? No way. My ankles. Oh, I'm just cringing just watching. But I, I don't think the camera shows just how high that it is. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's probably eight, seven and a half to eight foot on the lower side, I would say, right? That's great. And the course is made out of concrete. <laughs> so it's not like it's like. <laughs> it's not a soft impact. Not landing. at all. Oh, nice switch whip off off of the um, loading dock into the, the bank right there. Oh, doing too. it both ways. So it's cool how he just like switches up pace, right? He just goes super fast at the quarter pipes one run, and now he's like coming with like a slower kind of more jib approach, so to say. Yeah, well, like like we said earlier with the judges, it's an overall impression. If you can show that you can do all different types of ridings, that's going to work in your favor. Exactly, because like the number one qualifier yesterday was Dennis Henderson. And he rode everything. Like, uh, he, listen, he's going to be riding. He's in the last heat today, guys. You'll see what we mean, all right? <laughs> if you guys watch any of my stories yesterday, you guys would understand. Here comes Jordan. Oh, so clean, huh? Double peg to hard 360. 
Nice nolly nice. to Feeble to Hard 180. I don't think we've seen him miss a trick yet. Yeah, and like they're all technical tricks. Like these aren't like there's nothing easy about what he's doing. Absolutely not. It takes a lot Ooh. of strength, a lot of strength and muscle to pull around like yes. a 540 spin out of that. And especially if you notice, he actually came from the other direction of the car, so he had to like almost get in there and then re alley oop again. I, it's something that I noticed. I know I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. On the rad chair setup, nice. He's Such a cool, a cool guy as then. well. Such a cool dude. Like, I mean, everybody here. I'll, I'll, I can say that for everyone, but like. It's just somebody like Jordan, like my brother got to hang out with him yesterday, you know, while the uh, prelims were going on. And my brother just, he had such a good time. Oh. Wow, nice double down side tail whip. And that's another goofy foot attribute, right? He's able to Absolutely. kick down side tail whips. Yeah. What do you think he's going to do at the end of the run this time? He did that huge flare, which is crazy. I'm thinking another five flare maybe. Oh, double whip the so, other way. Yeah, so that was the opposite car, like we were saying, because he's goofy foot. That's tricky. Nice, mixing it up with the hanger. All day qualifying is continuing here. Oh, here Next spot. Oh, see how he like oh. switches. Oh my goodness, he's like switch his feet up because he went uh, switch foot on, switch on the way up to do the lucky. Like that's another groovy footed trick right there because he's just capitalizing on it. It's really cool to see. So wow. He's got those double bar spins like it's nothing. I, I'm enough? jealous. I was never like, I mean, like, I could do straight double bar spins good, and I could do double bar spins, but I never loved it. Like, I, I just wasn't, ha I, I never felt comfortable. And, like, seeing people do it downstairs and stuff, crazy. Insane. Look at wow. that. Wow. And his crank flips, like, when, when he does his crank flips in, he just, like, kicks his feet so wild. It's so cool, because, like, a lot of people have been making it, like, such, like, they keep it like really short and sweet, but his look wild. Yeah, I those... noticed that yesterday as well, and I was like, that looks awesome. It's like a big no-footer ca like crank flip. Yeah, and maybe it's the pants too that allow him to do that. <laughs> They're cool. Let's see, let's see uh, 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 when he's on the deck, if he reaches in the fanny pack to get the trick list out. Yeah, he's in next, next, next line. All right, Japan Airlines, as he said in the background right now. Oh! You can see it flying up. <laughs> <laughs> would say that. Japan Air. Oh, man, it's so cool. Rim brings so much energy to Coming the Coming up with speed again. Here we go. Whoa! Wow, I did not see him do that yesterday or in practice. None. And then he does a grind to hard spin out. And he calls it there. Wow. He's always got, like, such a relaxed look on his face. Like, it's just never a big deal to him. Yeah, he's probably, you know, I'll just do it again in my next run. It's never a big deal to him. Definitely have the crowd going. Oh, check this out. Whoa! Pegs up, a hard 182, five off of it. Look at that, carbon into it, so smooth. He's just got that ability to make everything look just so nice. Wow. wow. Oh! So close to landing. I think he might have smashed his hand on the side of the dumpster. Oh man, that would be rough. Up. Medics are out. Th yeah, he could have could have knocked the wind out of himself. But we're yeah, gonna I think he might have hit the small takeoff oh, into the dumpster with his hand. Yeah. Mm. Any assumptions of uh, what happened to him at all? But it's always hard to see another rider go down. Definitely, you always hope for the best. But real quick, guys, we're gonna step away. You guys are going to check out uh, commercials real quick, and we'll be right back to the contest. What's up? I'm Dakota Roche. We're here at the Vans US Open of Surfing for the Vans BMX Waffle Cup event. I'm going to do a little course preview for you guys. So this obstacle behind me, contributed by Radshare, this is a replica of everything that BMX is about. Something as simple as a cinder block and a piece of wood. This obstacle right here, contributed by Colt Crew. You see those dumpsters all over the side of the road. You always wish you could jump into it and whatever, and now's your chance. All kinds of variations going on over here. I can't think of anything more Huntington Beach than having a lifeguard tower on the course and the Bloom BMX brought just that. 
fans reached out to me and asked me to contribute some artwork. Being able to do something on this scale is kind of mind-blowing. It's one of my passions. It's almost on par with riding for me. It's gonna be a wild weekend. It's gonna be a good time. It's dropping, dropping in right now. All right, he's pedaling towards the quarter pipe. Oh, I wonder what he was doing right there. He was setting up for an X up. But I, I don't know. I just never see Ben do an X up. So I wonder no, if he was going to do something. I think something. he was setting up for something. Maybe he didn't have the right speed. Yeah, could have or he been the took off right Yeah, off took off run from the rim. Here we go. Next oh, up, back. nice. See? That looks we so crazy. We knew something was coming out of that one. You don't see a lot of people doing those uh, that combo. Yeah, you know what? When I was younger, X ups were a, a big combination. I feel like they they kind of disappeared from BMX for a while, so it's good to see them back. Nice 270 in. So cool to see Ben. Ben just got off the of X Games last uh, last week. He was he was holding the lead in park for like half the competition. They were oh, that one was also. Crazy to watch. Yeah, it was. Johnny Rakos. Wow. He did that combo earlier. It's just crazy you can do that twice in a row like that. Unlock. Nolly Bar. Whip out. Tail whip down. Yeah, we said jumping off of it would have been rough. Now doing a tail whip, trying to find your feet, uh, especially a break with tail whip. Like, oh, that's, that's never fun to land. Absolutely, especially if you don't land right, if you land crank arm and they slip oh, a little, you're definitely going to jar your ankles. He's having a really good finals today. Nice, I love oh, that combination. I same, I love that trick. Kevin Peraza. Oh, he just did double truck off of the Bloom Lake Park Tower. That was crazy. I didn't see him do that one yesterday. That's new for him. Oh, wow. Oh, that one. Yeah, did not see him do that one that yesterday either. That was crazy. The way the spin went up and down. And then... Nice. Suey off the rail. Wow. Rim really can't do it all. Ice. <laughs> I think a lot of street riders that might have thought that Rim was just a park guy, I think they're getting their, their eyes opened up today for sure. Absolutely. Let's see if Jordan can get this one. Yes. Wow, the precision you need to be able to have for that and know where you're going with fakies. Oh, it's nuts, huh? Like, especially the timing, too. Like, just making sure you get that spin at the right time. There it is. Oh, no. That momentum of, like, coming in, getting that momentum, like, landing fakie and something that's sideways, that's always hard. That's always super Absolutely. Tricky. It's just nice to see him back out on course yeah, and having fun, though. You're right. You know, he was down for a little bit there, but... And to try the trick again, obviously didn't scare him the first time. Wow! Oh he was on the edge of that. Yeah, Ben was like the first person I think we saw tricking it yesterday. Yeah. He ended up doing a backflip over it at the beginning of the contest today. That was uh, in the background of the camera when, you, uh, when it first started. Absolutely <laughs> He started things insane. straight away. The camera yeah. wasn't even ready for him. <laughs> okay, so that was a complete switch tail Switch rip. Complete switch. Because even though he is Gooby Foot, his tail ups are regular. He still ki uh, kicks with the back foot and catches with the front. So that was a switch whip. That trick right there, Natalia, that's always been the trick that was like my hardest. Like, I, that was always like a trick that like I wanted to do, but I was terrible at it. Just over choosing like, back over. You have to be like a superhuman to be able to pull that off. I swear to you. Oh, the stuff that Alex Heim does and how he yes. does these tooth overs. Wow. Insane. The Magic Powers video oh. was ridiculous. Crazy. But man, Wallace just killed it on that one. He did a uh, uh, spin Smith combination and 270 and back in. So cool. Awesome run for uh, for Ben today. I think the riders are really starting to feel tired and trying to preserve oh. their energy at this point yeah, now. Th these jams, like, yes, you have many a times to, to get, you know, your chance to do your tricks on the course, but... Absolutely. you got 15 you know, it's minutes. so many attempts that you have to be able to be there physically to pull it off. Like, you get wore out so quick. Especially somebody oh! like Johnny Rakus, where you're, a lot of the tricks that you're doing, you're not using the transition. You're jumping off of banks. You're jumping onto stuff. You're jumping the flat. Like, that is super tasking like, on your body. Absolutely. You need a lot of power to be able to do what these guys do. Yeah. And, and for Rim, you need a lot of speed. <laughs>
And he's coming back more. Are we going to see the quad bar? Oh, triple, triple, huge! Woo, just the crowd just went there. crazy. Oh. The, the eruption behind us. I hope that you guys can hear that on our microphones. It is nuts. <laughs> Both ways with the bar spin. Uh, I'm just so I'm so like it's been so cool to see Rim just like get better as a rider from like when he was a young teenager riding and then like seeing where he's at now. He's just, he's in that elite league of park riders. Like, Absolutely. you know that whenever there's a park contest, like, Rim's going to be a guy that's going to potentially be at the top. I was talking some, to some of the boys yesterday with the high air contest, and I said, yes. oh, you guys are going to smash, and they're like, I don't know, Rim's here. Yeah, so, that was so yeah. much fun. Like, Rim, like, he just nonchalant came on the course and just did the highest, like, tabletop air on the course. Nice gap to Feeble over the whole setup right there. That's very precise. Beautiful the switch downside whip. whip. I'll say it again. That street style downside whip, when the when you're like catching pedals almost simultaneous as when the bike uh, lands, so cool. Let's see what he's gonna finish with. Oh, oh I think he was going for the downside do. whip off. Maybe, yeah, it looked like the bike was setting up for it for sure. Definitely Man, a cool looking trick. Yeah, I, I've been loving seeing all the street riders doing the. Downside tail whips in and out of the grind stuff has been so cool, so awesome to see. But that's going to be it for jam number two. We're going to send you guys to a commercial real quick, and we'll be back to talk about the next jam. Welcome back. We are here at the Vance BMX Waffle Cup. Amazing day so far. The riding has been awesome, and it's only going to get better. You know, there's so many riders that we haven't got a chance to see yet that I can't wait to get in this course, and so many different styles as well. So before we get to that, we are going to send you guys to the Kevin Peraza content piece. This is to promote his video, Contoto, which is an amazing video. So uh, check it out and enjoy. <laughs> Back guys, we're going to intro jam number three for you. And like we said earlier, we've been going back and forth between the women's and men's heats for the jam. So the next jam is going to be women. It's going to be Danny Moran. It's going to be Jesse Gregory and Bethany Hedrick. So let's talk about what happened yesterday. Bethany had a very, very scary crash. That one was scary to witness. I'm glad that she's out here today and going to yeah. do her best. So I think what she was trying to do, she was coming up on the bloom obstacle from the opposite way from the high side and did a bar spin up and I think slipped her hand and just couldn't get off the bike in time and fell uh, and, I, and hit the other ramp on the, on the downside Worst straight to the scenario, flat. Like the scariest situation to be in on that. And it scared me, but both of us, we saw it from behind. So like we just didn't even know how she was. When she finally got up, I was so glad to see. But then I was like, man, a rough crash like that, like that's gonna wear you out. And this is like her first like big contest. So like I know she was really excited to be out there. So she just, was absolutely killing it in yeah. practice too. She had the bar spin. I see I saw her do it three times beforehand. Oh, that's how it goes in BMX. But the good news is she is back on the course. She is ready to ride. Question is, is she gonna get redemption on that? I think uh, it, so. It, it, She's if young. she does, amazing. If she doesn't, I don't blame her though, honestly. Absolutely. I, I was imagining the worst. Um, so I was just glad to see her up and walk off the course on her own. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see how she goes. I absolutely. think she's going to get redemption for sure. Yeah. And the rest of the riders, Danny was killing it yesterday. She sent the channel gap, which was crazy. She, she's just like in the jam. She's like, I'm going for it. Like she, she, I, I didn't see her look at her or anything. She just sent it. And she fell, but she got right back up. And it, it's a, it, like I said, the women's BMX is just evolving so much. I mean, you're a big part of it. You were the one that was the 2019 Pro Cup champion. <laughs> it was just, you must have been so proud of that. Uh, I am. That was the last time I was actually in Huntington as well. So and that's the last time everybody was in Huntington, really, because it, it's been since 2019 since we've done one of these events. You know? I was. I was very surprised to take the win but also very grateful and happy and it was 
one of my uh, only major wins actually in, in, in a contest. So I'm, so cool. I'm stoked. Yeah. So cool. So so happy to see that you were able to get that one and look into the future once you get healed up on this. So only a few more few more months to go and I'm back on the bike right. ready to go. You'll be there. Don't worry. It'll take some time. But <laughs> Jesse Gregory, let's talk about Jesse Gregory. She's a Huntington Beach local. She rides sheep hills all the time. She loves BMX, so it's going to be really cool to see her out here. The crowd's going to go absolutely nuts when she's on the course as absolutely. well. Absolutely, and she is the manual queen. She really if is. Anyone, any of the girls in, fr in freestyle BMX who can manual, it's Jessie. Like, yeah. you, you won't out manual her. She's definitely was, got them on the That lock. was the first thing I noticed about her that really, like, stood out. Like, I was like, I, just her bike control for manuals, you know? Like, I think she, she had, like, a racing background. So yeah, she had a racing background. That translates background. really well. Like, I but was she's able to, able to link the lines me. together with those manuals. So I'm excited to see what she does put together. True. And especially on this course, like, there's potential to be linking so many different lines, like grind combinations, even, like, in and out of the, uh, the dumpsters and stuff like that. So it will be really cool to see how she approaches it. But this is another three-person heat. So this is going to be a 10, 11-minute jam, somewhere yep. around there. I don't have the graphic right now, but I know it's around there, um, which is, seems to be enough time. It gave them a good, good amount of run in the, in the first uh, women's heat. So uh, we'll see what they do in this one. So I, I did get word that Jessie was eyeing up to manual the top of the bloom obstacle. I don't think I saw her do it in practice, so I'm hoping that she does pull that one out. And that um, would be yeah, a big that move. one's That's pretty scary. scary. And she's yeah. brakeless. It's not like she could like rely right. on the brakes to like step back and make sure she's good. Like that's a heavy move right there. Pe so if yeah. Jessie pulls that one, this crowd's gonna go crazy. Oh, They're absolutely. going to go absolutely nuts. So <laughs> we'll be cheering her on. We'll be uh, super excited to see what happens with this one. But once again, I just want to remind you guys that there are six jam heats total. So uh, next is going to be men's, then it's going to be women's, and then it's going to be men's. And then uh, after all said and done, we're going to be doing a best trick, and it's going to be open to all the riders. So not just from today, it's going to be from yesterday as well. So there is going to be some of the craziest riding you 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 can only imagine. Honestly, it's going to be ridiculous. Absolutely, the, the people the, like the tricks that they're doing, I can't. My brain can't even comprehend with the the combos and the tricks that they have. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I don't even know what I just saw. Like, for an example, like Dan Crook, he won the hop challenge yesterday. He grinded up the rail, hard 180 to the other rail to the pegs, to tires, to bar spin off. But we'll Insane. get to that. But the next is going to be jam number three right now. First rider in is going to be Danny Moran from Columbia. So <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I'm excited to see this one. All right. As she takes the course right now, we'll see which approach she goes. It seems like... Um, bringing high energy and speed she's not scared at all she also is a pads uh she doesn't ride pads at all she's a padless rider <laughs> and so when she fell yesterday she went straight to her knee i was like oh ow and then i was like actually that's really ow she doesn't have any knee pads on <laughs> I, couldn't I couldn't imagine riding like at the level that they are without pads on like i, I when i put pads on i feel like i'm superman Look at that, yeah. riding up the stairs to Can Can right there. That was really that cool. That was cool. That's was definitely so cool different. They, mild, they modeled that setup off of a famous California spot, and it's a 15-stair rail in, in real life. <laughs> and uh, they actually shrunk it down. So the steps, there's 15 steps, but they're very, very close together, so you can actually ride up them. But she's got a really, really cool run going Whoa. on. Oh, she's, <laughs> I didn't know she was going to have enough speed would, out yes, of it. That's what I was thinking as but well. But she's a risk taker. She, in her riding, really cool to see. She, she down Definitely to not scared to try new things and just send the gaps. There. Oh, bar spin out. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Really good first run, though. Especially, this is like one of her first big events. So she's got to be like a little nervous, right? Oh, talking about the stairs, Jesse goes up and turns down out. Yeah, I hope you guys heard all the Huntington Beach locals going crazy for her. But she's got such a cool, unique approach. There's the manual. Just her form, the way she's able to get the bike or get her body so far back. And um, that's the trick to manuals. you got to keep your body low, keep your body back, and try to keep the front wheel close to the ground. And she gets it. She knows exactly where that balance she point is She definitely does. Time. I cannot manual for the life of me. And she's tried to give me tips, and I just cannot do it. Yeah, just, just watch what she does and replicate it. Oh, can land it out. That was cool. That's different. Oh, nice little air to the bank right there. That was a good first run for Jesse. Hopefully it gives her some uh, energy to move forward with uh, trick potential in the future. We'll see. You can see she's got no shirt on now. The sun has come out, and it's so hot out there. Yeah, it's going to get. You burn very quickly. It's going to get super hot. So Bethany Hedrick back on the course right now. Looking like she hasn't skipped a beat so far. Nice to bargain. So Bethany's the go. Oh! 
I think maybe a bit of first contest nerves there for her because she has them on lock. She does them every time in practice. But this uh, Bethany is the girl that we said that Barsman up the bloom up school and fell down yeah. yesterday. So, so she could be in some pain. There, she, yes, yeah, she said her leg was her biggest issue. I don't know if she hit it on the edge of the ramp. I don't know exactly what happened, but... Yeah, and when you have your leg bothering you, though, that's like the your base, right? That's where you're able to pump up and down on. So absolutely. Ooh, quick T -bog toboggan. Out. Quick toboggan, huh? Talk about the heat. She's wearing all black with a black bike, black helmet. Yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday she had a tank top on cruising. Today she came like a. She, I don't think she saw the the weather program for today. <laughs> We're sitting up here and it's getting pretty hot, so I couldn't oh, imagine being on the course. My palms are sweaty. I'm not sure if that's if I'm nervous or if it's hot. <laughs> All right, it looks like they're gonna take a little bit of break in between, taking a second real quick. All right, she's clearing some room. All right, she's up. She's oh! Going oh, so she's going uphill as well. It's got a slight incline going that direction. So you got to bring enough speed to be able to counteract that, keep the front end up. And maybe for the public or people who do not ride BMX, they might see that as a quite an easy trick. But if you drop that wheel too early oh, or too late, terrifying. there is a lot of things that could go wrong. So it's yeah. definitely one of the harder tricks. Absolutely. Nice fast plant on the bank. Yeah, her just control, like her ability to just be able to control her bike, it just looks so natural. Like everything she does, like it's like she's been doing it all of her life, you know, what she has really, but it's just cool to see that. She's also a goofy footed rider as well. Awesome. And she rides mountain bikes as well too. Uh, yeah. She's doing that a lot. All right, Beth's back on the course. Yes! There's yes! that tail whip! Got it! Nice. All right. Here we go. That's going to that's gonna get her confidence up too. Absolutely. All right, back up on top of the bloom ramp. Nice table in. She is cruising around this course Ooh, with power. I like how she like brought the speed into that fast plant and used the momentum coming up. Oh, nice grind. Nina, Nina, one of our judges, <laughs> is going to be very proud to see that one. I hope, hopefully someone does a double peg grind one-hander like Nina does. She, uh, she oh, does no one so doesn't good. like her. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> now, I guess we'll mention the judges. We have four judges today. We have Ryan Biz Jordan, we have Nina Petrago, Grant Castelluzzo, and we also have Linda Grabner. So, a very diverse group of riders that are judging this one. So, uh, really awesome to see. Um, look at Danny bring in. What did she do on that first set right there? Oh, or did she do an X up on the drop in? Uh, yeah, X up off the uh, off the bloom obstacle the there. That's nice. Nice Smith. Good Hopefully, Smith we too. see her do the 270 Smith on that quarter coming back. No put her out. Coming on over towards the dumpster. No footer in. Nice. No footer in. X, up oh, X up out. She's really making use of the course as yeah, well, riding, riding everything. She is riding everything. Like she's a, uh, she's not scared to try try a little bit of everything on this course, which is cool to see. I even saw her. I think I think she jumped over the uh, the loading dock and earlier in the run. Oh. I don't think we said that, but I, that's that's really cool. You know, it's a good street street style setup. All right, we got. Jesse back in. Let's see the menu. Oh, oh, that was scary right there. That was scary. Oh, and she, <laughs> you can see, she, she was showing it on her face. That right one's there. got the blood pumping, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's terrifying. That's like the worst case scenario. And she's brakeless. So, like, it's not like she could, like, lean back and use the brake to feather. Like, she's got to keep it perfect. Absolutely. And it's not perfectly flat. So, her balance point is going to be different. Exactly. There's not a lot of room for error up there, None. that's for sure. None at all. And Bethany will tell you, nobody wants to do what she did yesterday. You know, she she had worst case scenario. Calling it early there. But she's back on the course though, which is so cool to see. With only three riders in this heat, like they come around very quickly and they're just riding with power. Yeah, it, they're gonna get wore out pretty quick. Nice peg grind. I would love to see more riders start learning peg grinds on quarter pipes. That's like the best feeling trick. I always been one of my favorite tricks. I even yeah. said it in an interview once. That if I can do one trick again on my BMX, I would love to just be able to grind a quarter pipe. I remember the feeling when I first landed my double peg without putting my foot down on on the deck. Oh, it, it was isn't it the coolest. It, like you're it, so proud of yourself. Like yeah, absolutely. I think it might have been my first trick ever. Maybe oh, that's so cool. Nice disaster on the quarter pipe. Back over to the Cole Crew dumpster. Good to see Bethany out here. Everybody's cheering for. Her. All right, Danny Moran is dropping back in. She usually starts out pretty pretty fast, so 
I think we, we like barely caught a glimpse of what she did on that Miss light guard tower last time. Oh, that was beautiful. That was really good. Such a good. technical move. She knows she probably had to switch it up on the quarters there to make it a bit easier for her. So we have four minutes left in this jam right now. So the riders are going to get somewhere around four more runs, which is crazy to say. <laughs> I tell you what, I would be dying. Yeah. All right, but hopefully, you know, when you're this far into it too, it's like then you have to start going in your trick list, right? Of like, all right, what can I do? It's like a lot of stuff you didn't even practice yet, and you're just going to be trying it for the first time, which yep. is which is always tricky. But you have like that that contest energy that like just pushes you over the edge and, and gets you able to do it. I know you've been in a situation oh, before. Oh yeah, and once the crowd gets behind you, you feel unstoppable yeah, that you can't really do true. anything. Because I'm always saying, okay, I've done this, this, and this. What can I try next? Oh, I'm going to do this, but I haven't tried it. Yet. Send it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I've been there, done that. Everybody knows my famous double back flip in the tour. Oh, oh, it's right there again. But she's reading it right, though. She's not, like, committing to the point where it's too far gone, right, where the front wheel is going to be off the edge. She's, like, reading it right away. Like, all right, am I going to be able to pull this? And she's making the right decision. All right, I she, think we're going for it like again. She's going for it again. Oh, she's, she's like getting stuck in that groove of like bringing the same approach to it, right? Like she's like, she's going for it, but she's like not ready to make that That, next that commitment step. just yet. The, the fear is there. But every run, she's just getting calibrated. Oh. oh. So close, so close. It's just beating that last bit of fear, and we all know how hard that can be sometimes. It's, it's such a mental hard. game. It's hard, you know, like we all have this like internal thing in us, right, that tells us like, all right, try this or yeah maybe you shouldn't and you got to go with your gut you, you got to be able to read it and every single time she's doing that her brain and her body's processing that information and she's she's learning she's learning uh, of how to approach it so bethany bringing some speed to the court of bank there's that whip got the tail oh. again i met bethany at woodward last summer actually it was really cool to see her riding awesome that was a big grind that here. one the whole yeah, quarter then good, huh? Over to the bank. Oh, nice. and that was a really oh, nice bar out of the bank. The three to fake three to fake. Oh, oh. So close, so close. So she's somebody who rides cassette. You can see she's pedaling backwards. She doesn't have the uh, luxury of the free coaster. When I say luxury, yes, it makes it easier to, to, to do fakey, fakey, but a lot harder to do other tricks. Too, Absolutely. Though. I've tried riding a free coaster, and I just can't do it. I think I even fakey better with a cassette. <laughs> yeah, I'd put a free coaster on. I'd gain a couple tricks, but I'd lose a lot. So Yeah. I understand. All right, here she comes. Bringing some speed to the quarter. Nice air. Nice, nice air. air. You think she's going to send that, that transfer from quarter to quarter again? She was she tried it in the Bloom Jam yesterday. I wonder she, if she, it's on her mind at all. I wonder if she has any interest in it. I hope she does. Oh, uh, the 270 oh, Smith nice. is clean. Nice. So clean. So that trick, she, you know, you have to run an opposite side peg on to be able to pull that one because it's like a regular spin and then opposite peg. You could do it with the other peg, but you'd have to spin opposite, which is super hard. See, up and over, oh. but she didn't really have much speed on that one. <laughs> she didn't have much speed at all. Super, super cool to see her out here. She was a last-minute entry, so... I love yeah, it. That I is, love seeing women get involved and trying yeah, out, just know, having and, fun. And she's showing showing her worth out here. She's an amazing rider. Okay, everybody's getting behind Jesse Gregory right now. Let's get this manual. Here we go. Come on, Jesse, you got Let's get some camera angle on there, ready to go. Let's hope that she lands it. Oh, oh come on, Jess. So she's got to go a hair faster with that manual that she has. If she goes a hair faster, she's going to be able to do it. All right, she's back Here in she right goes. now. The she's determined. Go she's got this. Yes! Oh, she got it! Yes! That is so awesome. I knew she was going to get it today. Oh, that crowd just went crazy behind us. That was a beautiful look back as well. Super high from quarter bank. And can't There's land her again. Yep. Wow. She's yeah. stoked. I, I know how much she wanted to do that, so she's going to come off the course no matter the results and be happy with Absolutely. herself. Absolutely. And I just want to go out there and say Daryl now and Crop Eggs are doing a great job for everybody out there doing the announcing. And, uh, man, it's been really awesome to see him all this weekend. So this is going to be the last run Whoa, for Oh, that was clean. 
and uh, let's see how she approaches it. So far, so good. She's got such good jumping style, like her control jumping. She's just so natural in the air. Bar spin again. Can she get the three to fakey? She's got it. Yes! yes. Nice. What the first one that we've seen today. Yeah, what a way to uh, to have your last run on the course. This Especially, one's we got to reiterate, she had the worst crash of yesterday out of all the women. So seeing her back up on her bike, man, it's, it's, I'm just so happy to see that. And that was a really nice run that she did just there. Hopefully with her next one that comes around that we see the redemption on the bar spin. Or maybe that would be in the women's best trick. Could be the best trick as well, you're right. right now, all right. So we're going to be heading to a commercial. And uh, you guys are going to go straight into it, the bloom thing once we get back. So we'll see you in a second. right there <laughs> came up with that one but yeah let's talk about the bloom the bloom has done so many amazing things for women freestyle you know all about it take it away explain to everybody exactly where the bloom is so the bloom was created by angie marino one of our riders that are coming out in one of our next few heats and beatrice um, they created the platform to sh broadcast women's bmx and just show that what we can do um, it's been a hard fight to get where we are and have girls' divisions, so we really wanted to push women's BMX and get girls involved. Um, so it's so cool to see that vans are behind us and they organize the trip, and it, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, it's working. You guys have been doing an amazing job, and the Bloom video, the one that you guys just watched, the segment right there, there's a full video that's on the van's YouTube channel. Highly recommend checking it out. The vibe of it was so cool. I just love the way that they were just all having so much fun together, traveling different skate parks, and vans giving them the opportunity to do it. I'm so proud of it. So, It's such a good community. We're all such good friends. You know, at the end of the day, after the contest, we all just like to have fun and congratulate each other. We, we have our competitive side, but we leave that on the course. And then a trip like that, I, I'm jealous I wasn't, being, I was able, I wasn't able to go uh, just with injuries and stuff. Yeah, it course, looks like so much fun. You were there I, in spirit, though. I was there in spirit. I was messaging them, and I FaceTimed a few. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's so great I'm, to see. I know there's going to be another one, so you'll be there. But <laughs> we're going to head on over to Jam 4. This is going to be a men's jam. We got some heavy hitters in this one. Let me give you guys a couple of the names. We got Mr. Gary Young, longtime Vance rider, my fellow Vance teammate for years now. He's from San Diego, California. We have another San Diego, California rider in Chad Curley. Absolutely amazing riding yesterday. The, the level of the, the technical rail tricks he was doing was ridiculous. Then we have a rider from New Jersey, a guy that I've known for an extremely long time. I think I met him when he was six years old, actually. Wow. Mr. Colin Varniak. Colin has been on a tear lately. Oh, it's been amazing to see him turn into like a high-level elite street rider. And then the <laughs> final rider in this one is going to be Josh Dove. Oh, let's talk about Josh Dove. What do you guys say about him? I have known Josh since he was young. So like I maybe like same same as you, like six years old, maybe nine. And he is just an absolute ripper. He goes so high and just like. You look at his one-foot tables and everyone thinks that he's just a bull ride rider, but then he's also got backflip bar spins, oh, backflip bar spin, no handers. How about a seat bounce like, under flip to foot jam? Oh, my God. You guys are probably going to see that shortly. Let me tell you, this kid is, <laughs> he's special, extremely special. The combos he can do with the seat bounce it's shouldn't nuts. be possible. I don't, I don't know how he does and his it. his style is second to none at this point. It's absolutely amazing to see what he's been able to do in such a short amount of time that he's been on, like, the, you know, the... 
the level of where he's competing, you know? So uh, it's it's been really cool. He's making a heck of a name for himself. His family is super nice as well. He's a yeah. great dude. He's definitely going to be a contender today. He is, absolutely. This, this next heat is going to... The level of riding is going to be, I can't even, yeah. I can't let's, even. Let's add, we forgot to add that Josh Dove actually won the uh, height contest yesterday. So the height and I'm contest sure you're going to see why. Air. Yeah, you will see exactly <laughs> why shortly. So we're counting down a few seconds. The guys are wrapping up practice behind us. We're going to go straight into us. Once again, Gary Young, Chad Curley, Colin Varniak, Josh Dove. It's getting good, guys. It's getting real good. So we're waiting for the judges to give us a thumbs up real fast. And then we're going to drop our first rider. Just to get, let you guys know, too, uh, the sun is out now, full on. The guys are riding in beautiful Huntington Beach, California. You can feel the breeze. You can see everybody surfing in the background as we're doing this. And like, that's what I was going to say. The, the, ride, the level of riding's not heating up. It's also the sun is heating it, up. Absolutely. It's very hot out here. I'm sure we're all looking at the water and can't wait to jump in there after what all said and done. Like, uh, to be honest with you, I've never swam in the, in the <laughs> California Ocean before. I've been, I, I put, like, my feet in it before. I've never been, like, an ocean guy. That counts. That counts. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> Sorry, you can feel the temperature of the water. One, that counts. We're getting this one going. First rider in, Gary Young, representing Vans for such a long time. Amazing, stylish rider. So much originality. So much control. So much finesse. Gary's got two children of his own that he actually brings to the skate park as well, which is cool. And uh, I've known Gary forever, a great friend of mine for years, and uh, it's going to be awesome to see him ride this course today. He's such a nice guy, too. I've caught up with him the last week with Angie when we were going to the skate parks, and he's just so helpful and so nice, and he's a great rider. So he'll be making a trip to the course any second now. And I'm curious to see if he's going to bring like a technical approach, if he's going to go fast, if he's going to do both, I don't know. I think he's going to do both. When I caught up with him last week, he was practicing some rail tricks. But like this, a massive three table over the bloom obstacle, like that's not small. That's, that's huge. Not, that's crazy. And like back and forth, like he, he's carving one way doing the 360 tabletop, carves the other direction doing a one-footed table across the channel. Look at that oh! gap over Smith. That is scary. He is coming out, guns firing right now. He is on. He's on and, it. And he's always been at this level. Like this is something he's been at since when I first seen him enter his like first pro contest, which was in like 2002. Ooh, Smith, Smith up. up. Looks like he was going for a manual after that. He was trying to link yeah, something up. Maybe uh, linking something there. Awesome first run for Gary. All right, this is where it's going to get really crazy. And this crowd favorite for sure. The stuff that he's landing first try in a co in a contest like it's just ridiculous. Wow! Oh, driver in. Oh, switch no, tail get over the top of it. Yeah, I don't think he did switch tail up yesterday. Uh, no, I don't think so. Cool. No. Next rider, originally from New Jersey, moved out. To All right, next rider dropping in, Colin Varignac. I'll, I'll give you a quick little story. He used to race BMX, and my cousin raced BMX that was the same age as him, and we rolled up on uh, Colin's local track, and Colin was the fastest kid around. He was so fast. So seeing him this late. Look Whoa! at that cross across the bar spin. Natalia, that's like six feet above. That, that. is high. I, I wouldn't even be able to jump that high off the bike. Tires to bar across the dumpster. Tossing the bars. Very cool to see the height. And the oh, up to manual, up to manual bar off. Right now, he was killing it yesterday. And at the end of it, I saw him go to the medics. And I got nervous. Wow. Beautiful. Rail ride to truck. And I was nervous he was not going to be able to ride in this today. And then seeing him out here, guns blazing. Like, that's amazing. He's coming out swinging. And he's calling it there. That was a good first run. Very good first wow. run. Wow. All right. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> there's his wings. Open them straight up over the yeah, blue obstacle. It's just every trick that he does, it's just got his own little, like, kind of, you know, he approach is, to it, right? Nobody's doing it like Josh. No Nobody way. Is. Look at that. Oh, oh and that's how he won the high contest yes. yesterday. He was doing that over and over and over, like, I even said, I was like, I don't think he can get much higher unless he leaves the skate park to pedal in for, for more speed. <laughs> that is honestly the truth, though. Oh, I love his tail whips, too. He puts his feet together, keeps the bike nice and slow, holds it till the end. 
He I thought he was going to do a trick. I thought he was stand up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, he is known for his seat bounce tricks. Foot jam. <laughs> Ready to drop after Gary. Oh, look at Gary bringing oh, the speed. He's, he's always oh, been known oh. to be able to bring his lines in. You can see he just that uh, transfer. Huntington, where am I every 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 skate park I would go with Gary on like trips and stuff. It was always like Gary riding like uh, his local skate park. He would just show up there and just know all the lines immediately. Like has a different approach to every skate yeah, park he, he goes to. He looks at it in such a unique like uh, outlook. And it's something that I, I never could relate to, but that was the cool thing about us. We were just two different riders, but we both just I've definitely each other. Exactly. I definitely noticed that with myself. I thought I had some different, unique outlooks on the skate park, and then I watched the men ride, and I was like, oh, my God, look at all these new lines that they've opened up that I didn't even see. And that's the best part about freestyle BMX. It's just you can do whatever you want. Oh, man. <laughs> Carrie almost did not make it up the ramp. Here comes Chad. Oh, look at oh. that nose across the 180. Look at this, tires up, across, tail whip wow. to Wow! Wow, Chad is killing it right now. Oh, just a His piece of cake nose man. Oh, oh, yeah. Man. This is crazy how you can do this, no problem at all. Chad is one of those riders where it's just trick after trick after trick. It's so quick, too, that it's impressive to yeah, watch. Uh, it's it's amazing. And, like, all of his video parts are, are just, it just doesn't seem possible. All right, Colin Vanderneck back on the course. What? Wow. He switched feeble to 360 off of the board. Oh! Oh! <laughs> he saved it. He's still going. That's even right, more so impressive. All right, so we two ends of the spectrum of what happens when you miss your hands. You can miss and you hit the ground, and you can miss and save at the last second. Exactly. He was probably hyped on that first Whoa. trick. You cannot afford to lose any focus on, on your BMX not bike. Not at all. Look at that. He did, that was our first half cap we saw across. All right, Barry. All right he's waving it off right there. Josh Tubb, you can hey, see him look at these pedaling. on the edge. Oh, oh my Josh! goodness! Uh, do you think the wind might have got him? Do you think the wind it almost him? looked like he kicked his seat. I have never seen him that miss was, a no-foot can like that before. That yeah, and maybe, over is such a yeah, big maybe jump. Maybe he just got stuck, but yeah, that was, uh, I guess the best way to describe that would be fast and loose, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they're showing and the loose side on a, that. He's a part of fast and loose. You know, the fast and loose team, they are a bunch of good guys. Uh, they're from all around oh. the world at this point. Um, and Vans is backing them big time. Oh, oh my God! Gary Young, are you kidding me? That was crazy. Wow, that's the first that we've saw, seen do that. Like. Yeah, nobody 360 tail. I mean, uh, we saw Dennis tail up yesterday, seen Gary 360, but both, wow. especially on a gap that big, wow. I think Josh is definitely going to need that time to recover and get his heart right down yeah, after right? that. <laughs> but man, Gary's, Gary, you know, he's waving that one all quick, so we're back. We're going to be back in with um, Jack Curley, nose wheelie, to Manuel, oh, to, to Feeble, to, to Bart, to, to Manuel. Are you kidding me, Chad? Oh! <laughs> he survived that one. One of the biggest line combos we've seen today. Absolutely. Wow. His balance point, unbelievable. Yes, and Chad is a new father. He's got a brand new baby. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute, too. Yeah, it's his family. It's amazing to see them here. Whoa! Whoa that was almost amazing. That <laughs> was almost like, <laughs> oh, like it was almost amazing. It was half amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'll take half amazing. It was really good up to that point. <laughs> he's having a bit of a rough go today. Uh, he's coming off a few times in his runs. True, true. Oh, wow. wow. Half cap bar out of it. Bringing that momentum. Oh, he's oh, up. Wow. He, this is what he wanted in that last run right there. The good news is they have enough runs to be able to get the redemption when they need it. I just love Colin's style. He's just in such control, and he's so powerful with what he's doing. All right, let's see what he's got at the end of he's the run here. He's lining up something. Coming towards the left guard tower. Smith, Smith. Nice. Oh, looks like he was looking for a bar off then. I think then. so. I think you're right on that one. Something to look forward to in the next run. Yeah. Oh! oh huge flip. Wow! I love his flip, how he delays the look. It's like almost like an like setting up for an underflip as he oh. does it in the background right there. But like he like he like doesn't watch like look back straight away, which no. is so cool. Wow! Oh, gosh. He knows he had to make up for that last run, and he certainly is yeah, right now. Yeah, it's just so much fun to watch. 
I just love how the crowd, every time he's doing his tricks, they're all on the edge of their seat. They're all like so nervous. What? Beautiful. I love how he does that one foot tabletop flare. Wow, a lot of this I did not see him do yesterday. He's really bringing it. That's true. He's got a great number of can I know we'll say for every trick that he does, it's great. Everything he does is great. But absolutely. I just gotta reiterate, though, easily easily no one of the best transition riders. Yeah, uh, absolutely. there's no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. And he traveled a, a long way from home to, to be out here. He's been hanging out with the fast and loose guys. Let's see if Gary's got this one. Here we go. Rick. Yes! Oh! Gary, that was absolutely Oh, my God. Oh, oh, no, Gary. Oh, that Ooh. was rough. I... Let's see. He's, He's up. up. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Wow. Gary is such a committed rider. Been doing this for Breakless so rider, too. Is he? Say that again. Is Gary a breakers? Uh, he is a breakless rider, I guess. Yeah, but he coming, wasn't. Yeah, yeah it, it, he switched off probably about maybe about ten years ago or so, maybe a little more than ten years ago. But he used to have breaks growing up um, um, with Gyro, and then he mixed it up. Wow, Chad just came bunny up up on top of that to to pegs. To wow. Manual. Oh, to manual to pegs to manual. So that was a really cool line. Back in. Bar spin out. Nice switch bar. Oh, on the way switch up. bar. Full cap. Oh, nice. far out. Bar spin. All right, let's see. He's got another one going for it. Oh, he's waving that one off. All right, Baranyak's back in. Smith. Oh, oh to Smith. nose. Wow. To nose. Wow. What's he got? Oh, off. look at that. Up rail to whip. He is cruising around with speed right now. Ooh, it looked like he, was something out, he wanted something out of that. I, I think. think he wanted to uh, fake manual. That would be very cool. Smith up. Looking for that manual. Smith down. Oh, it's Joe he Scott. Is. He's back in. Oh, was that a flip kick? I think it was. It's hard to tell from our angle right there, but I saw his foot come off. I just didn't see where it went. I think it was. He goes too high for the cameras. Look at the speed he's carrying right now. Oh, we're out of frame again. So high we can't catch it. That's what happens when Dubby's on course. He really could be the second coming. And you're down the stairs. I just love how he's just played around. Nice little tabletop. It's so cool that he can do like bar spin flare combinations. Like for somebody who's known as like stylish, you know, goofy foot guy, and then do bar spin flare, like exactly. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like people wouldn't know that he can flip bar spin tuck no hander. Like crazy, that right? is crazy. Very well rounded. All right, Smith across. Nice, Ali you pegs across. Let's play tabletop. 180 on the rad chair. That's a very oh. skinny setup right there, too. Tail whip nice. down. You want to hear a crazy Gary Young fact? Yeah. One of the first people I've ever seen do a bunny hop or try to do a bunny hop front flip was Gary Young. Yeah, in the in the 2005 X Games. A bunny hop front flip. <laughs> Like like uh, from a flat deck in, but wow. it was wild. It was very unexpected at the time. He tried to add the X Games. <laughs> it was cool. That is crazy. But look at Chad. Oh, he did a 540 down the stairs, which is pretty amazing. Looks like he's going to turn around and come back for a redemption. 184 oh. into it. He's going fakey. Yes, oh! Chad. That was so sick. Nice. The control Pegs you up. have to have for those spakies because you're carrying so much speed. True. Uh, it, it, there, I was watching him do it yesterday in his runs, and I was like, man, he's one of like the only people that can consistently do the 180s and like be able to adjust himself, just like not panic, just not scared at all. He's just so used to it. Keeping your composure, I guess. Exactly. Yes! Wow! Kyle just Smith nose bar across the blue lifeguard tower. That was ridiculous. 
Oh, oh nice. 540, 450, however you want to call it. Wow. Oh, Colin is just such an amazing rider. So cool to see where he's at now. Manuel yes. T-Bog down. And he's so, like, he's so well-versed. Like, it's like you don't see a repetition of his tricks. He mixes it up, like, a lot. Yeah. Like, when he went up for that manual, like, I'm like, oh, maybe it's going to be a, a bar spin, switch bar spin. Nope, toboggan. There we go. He got the backward pegs to bar spin out. I think he's happy with that run. I yeah, would be. Yeah, how could you beat that? That was really not? good. Let's Josh go. And, uh, I just want to say real quick that Colin Varignac actually rides for Fiend. That's the company that Garrett Reynolds owns, another rider from New Jersey. So it's cool to see that, uh, you know, Garrett got, you know, supports him. Um, two New Jersey original riders. I'm really proud of that. <laughs> Here comes Gary with some speed. Nice. Across there. With oh! oh, he just did bump jump across that like it was like a, like a pyramid. <laughs> <Those> <laughs> and landed on stairs. the other side of the stairs like it was a landing. That was crazy. <laughs> That's definitely unique. So he's got a flat tire right now. <laughs> we, uh, we just found out. That's I think as expected, he, he came at that pretty Imagine hard. Imagine that. You go so fast at a pair of stairs that you got a flat front tire, and you still managed to jump the whole thing. <laughs> Ridiculous. Look at the smile on his face, though. He's having a lot of fun. And that's what I love about these Vans contests is that we can all just have fun and cheer for each other. They're the best, honestly. There's no other events like these Vans events. The atmosphere the riders, is something it's, it's, that you it, can't... It's, it's been rough missing them for so long. Come on! Oh! 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 This is insane! Video tricks being laid down first time. The fact that you can get consistency in a competition is so difficult. Curly going backwards again. What? 180 tail whip. So dialed, so powerful. Curly on that front wheel, looking for magic. <laughs> Curly, time for a final thought if he wants one. Chad is going to wave it off. Can we show Max respect to Mr. Chad Curley? All right, that means Colin Varignac is going to be our final rider of the heat. Looking to come on out. Colin, once HB makes some noise, you're ready to drop. So come on, Huntington! Yeah, going all the way to pegs and then crossing over. Only rider to go coast to coast on that grind all weekend. Check it out. Into the dumpster to bars out. Verniak been laying down the tech all the weekend. Tail whip up. It's a little nose in. Super tough for these riders as well to lay it down and not get tired. Verniak headed back up. Little bar spin to manual to manual to all the way in. Ladies and gentlemen of HP, please show your respect for Mr. Colin Varniak, one of the stars of the weekend. All right, that's going to wrap up jam number four. I just got word that Josh Dove is going to be riding in best trick. So right now, Emma Finnegan, Nikki Fuentes, Angie Marino, and Paris Benengues, five minutes to practice. We are alternating jams, men and women out here. So we're going to give our women an opportunity to ride. Our goal is to share as much fun with as many people as possible and start working on reducing some of the barriers that make it more difficult for underserved communities to get involved in action sports. And Jonathan's nominating this next bike to be given away to his friend Norman. I want to and I almost feel like it's my responsibility to like pay it forward and, and give back as much as I can to try to create opportunities for the next generation.
highlights from our media partners and media team. I'm talking about Bloom BMX. We also have Dan Foley filming. We've got Colin McKay, the Van CM, making sure all the action is together. And we've got D Jeff Zielinski, Ryan Fudger, making sure all the riders' moments are captured properly. Again, just going to take this. Yeah, and our man Steve Crandall, he's been around. Partners, Radshare. Radshare is Steve Crandall and Nate's company from the East Coast. They work as a nonprofit to help put BMX rides and helmets on riders in need. They also do a lot of positive things for the community and mental health. So honored to have Radshare be a part of this event. You can see Steve Crandall's very unique designed ramp out there. It's that big cinder block with the two quarter pipes. So he's got that very unique designed artwork out there from Radshare. Also in the center of the park is Bloom BMX. You can actually see just close to the water side of that is Beatrice Trang waving right there to the crowd, giving us a kiss. Here, any of this? She's been a part of Bloom BMX for many, many a years. She wound up partnering with BMX superstars. Mike Check, hello, hello, Mike Check, Scotty Kramer. All right, so we are back in here, guys. We had a little malfunction with the microphone. Um, this is a live event. This is the kind of things that happen in a live event. We have to be ready for this. So, I don't know how much you guys heard about the rideshare, but we just want to cover it real quick. Steve Crandall having rideshare, doing great things for BMX, great things for the community. So, um, so I just found out that only my microphone is currently working right now. We're going to get this sorted, though, guys. We're going to we're going to get through this together. Right? But, I'll just ramble for a little bit, tell you guys about everything that's going on for the rest of the day. We have two more jams coming up. The next jam is going to be a women's jam, um, and then we have another men's jam after that. So there's four riders in each of these, so they are very stacked jams. Um, and let me just tell you, the list of the riders for both men's and women's, like this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have uh, the next jam, let me just tell you, we have Emma Finnegan, amazing street rider from from, uh, from Great Britain. We have Nikki Wetzel, we have Angie Marino, and we have Paris Benegas. But um, while you just have to sit here and listen to me talk because you, your microphone still doesn't work. Gonna give another <laughs> shout out to the I wish you could, I would I wish Natalia was on here to help me uh, talk about the women because she knows everybody so well and we will get there we'll get a chance to get there and talk about it but uh, we're just gonna get her microphone fixed shortly but let me point out you know we have uh, Angie Marino and Paris Benegas who uh, advanced riders um, we have um, Paris, who went to the Olympics, she competed in there as well with Natalia, which is really, really cool. Um, the experience that they had in the Olympics, like it just seemed like a mind-blowing experience, like something that you, if you get to experience, like you really need to appreciate that. And uh, once we get Natalia's microphone back on, we'll have her explain how cool it is. We'll have her show you her tattoo, also, <laughs> which is awesome as well. Also yeah, so, so Natalia, let's talk about the Olympic Rachel experience and like how proud of you were. The Olympics was amazing and I definitely went into it with the mindset of enjoy it and embrace it because I might not get the chance to go back. So I definitely made the effort to have fun, which I did and I think I brought a lot of the girls' spirits up and we just had a great time, honestly. I can't even, I can't even explain how amazing it is to represent your country and go to the Olympics. You can only imagine like taking it all in of how it all went down, but it's a big difference between competing in the Olympics and then competing in something like this. Like, it's just for fun. Like, so your experience with the Pro Cup last year, like, let's talk about that, like, how that compared to the Olympics. It's just laid back and it's fun and you can enjoy, you know, just riding your bike and especially with a jam format. Um, the Olympics, I felt definitely a little bit of pressure, but, you know, you just, you have to put that aside and just, again, have fun because if you're not having fun on your bike, it definitely shows in your performance. So, yeah, honestly, the, I usually get very nervous during contests, but the Olympics, for some reason, I was the least nervous I've ever been. So it was, it was definitely a different experience. But you know it's going to be a fun event as soon as you see the Vans logo attached to it. You know it's going to be a good time. Everybody's having so much fun here today. The level of riding has been amazing. And like I said, it's only going to get better as we're getting ready for jam number five. But um, let's talk about how you've met all the female riders. You know, you've been riding with the women riders for so long now. Like, when you get to watch these women ride today, like, 
Like, it's just, like you're sitting there like root for him on the inside, right? But then like at the same time, like you're sitting here like announcing, like it's got to be pretty hard to like try to find the balance in between, right? It's definitely hard to sit on the sidelines and watch the girls, um, but I'm also stoked for them and I hope they do well. And I have been coaching at every day. I've been out on the deck and helping them, um, you know, come up with lines or different trick ideas. So I think it's going to be a great show and I'm stoked just to be here. All right, well, I just want to welcome everybody from Instagram, from my channel, and also from uh, the Vans channel, of course. You guys get to see the next two jams, which is going to be awesome. We've had an amazing event so far. I've been alongside here with Natalia Diem. Um, this has been so much fun. This Vans event, any Vans event, they don't have to do it right. They bring so much energy and just good times to everyone, and they're giving away so much money today to all these riders. The men and women equal pay across. I'm so proud to be a part of this one. We're about to get started with the next jam. We have five women competing right now. We have Emma Finnegan, we have Nikki Wetzel, we have Angie Marino, and we have Paris Benegas. So next rider in is going to be Emma Finnegan. All right, the winner of the Olympic show. So Emma is on the course right now, cruising around. So Natalia, what sticks out to you as a rider, like from Emma Finnegan, from what you've seen in the in the Bloom Jam yesterday? I first met her uh, through Feast, and so that's more of a park contest, and I think she's really coming to her own with street riding, so I think she is one of the, you know, best girls out there for street riding. I saw her do a feeble grind to bar spin off yesterday, so hopefully we can see that today. Yeah, it was super clean as well. I noticed that, and I, I noticed that she was trying to do feeble to hard 180 as well on that same ledge, and, like, she was trying it over and over again, and, like, she was getting so close, so, like, I'm hoping that potentially we'll be able to see... Uh, her be able to do it today. It so Nikki. next rider dropping in is going to be Nikki from Las Vegas. So cool. She ended up winning the Bloom Jam yesterday. So let's talk about her. She is such a smooth rider. She is, I think, the only girl with a free coaster on as well. And that can show just with that 3D fake. It's so smooth, so clean. I think she'll do really well today if she's able to hold it together and stay on the bike. Absolutely. Like, the way that she's able to connect the lines together and incorporate the free coaster is so cool. Nice grind across the driveway box. We'll get right back into the fakey. Her rollouts are, like, so smooth, too. Definitely. I like, that's the one thing I noticed. Her, <laughs> her crashes are smooth, too. <laughs> they really are smooth. It's like she did that on purpose, then. <laughs> Building suspense, but she's going to get plenty of attempts to get on the course today, so... Next rider dropping in is going to be Angie Marino. She's been around BMX for such a long time. It's been so cool to see her be a part of the movement of women's BMX. So let's talk about her, Natalia. Angie Marino, like I said earlier, is part of the bloom. She also designed the obstacle out there and the colors, which is why she's matching with her bike and her shirt, as you can see. She's had a massive impact with freestyle BMX for women. It's it's so good to see that she's still out there ripping. And Angie, she's known to have, like, you know, a great outlook on courses and be able to hit the hips really well, be able to hit the, the jumps uh, good, whatever it be, whether you're at, like, a, a box jump or, or anything like that. Look at that. That, I think that was the first grind we saw down the rail of the women's today. Yes, definitely. I think she will be eyeing up some other stuff too on the rail. I'm excited to see what she can pull out. All right, well, so we have another rider to drop in right now. This is Paris Benegas. Amazing, amazing rider. Brings so much power to her riding. So it's interesting because, like, this course has a lot of street stuff, right? There's a lot of rails. But, like, let's see what she's going to do. Look at that first jump. The massive standout for Paris, that you can't miss her. She comes in with power and height. And I'm excited to see what she can do, like I said, on a street-styled course. Uh, she's still going to kill it. I saw her setting up to potentially do like a trick on and off of the Bloom obstacle. I wonder what she's going to do. I think she has a few like different variations. Um, there will be a Sui, I think. So that one's pretty insane. I'm excited to see how big she can extend it. She's been doing a lot of series lately. I guess that's what happens when you uh, ride with Ryan Nyquist on a daily basis. So <laughs> it makes sense. But her riding's been so strong for so long. And seeing her support from Vans and all that she's been able to do. You know, she, she rode for Team USA at the Olympics. And, um, yeah, she's, she, I'm, I'm really curious to see how the future goes, not only for Paris, but for just women's BMX in general. But we're going back up to the top of the order. This jam is going to be 15 minutes. Emma Finnegan back in. 
Like we said earlier, she was grinding this ledge. I wonder if she's going to do the bar spin out in her run today, or if she's going to wait till best trick. We will find out. I'm excited to see what she's got. Oh, oh alley -oop table. Awesome. I don't think any other girl's so doing that at the moment on this course. Yeah, the alley -oop is such a, a, a such a cool tool a tool to have, like in BMX, like to be able to come to a course like this and be able to ride things both directions. So to get a good alley -oop, I mean, Josh Dovey's like the level of alley -oop, like y'all want to aim for, but up on the oh, misses the feeble there. I think she definitely was going to go for the feeble boss man. She's good though. She's up. She'll try it again. Yeah, she's, uh, she's definitely going to get redemption on that in the next run. Right, so, like we said Quentes earlier in the uh, stream in. today, the Quentes run technically ends when you fall. Room. So, if you fall Anything first trick, that means Quentes the run's over. Um, but the max run is 30 seconds. So, yes, wow, look good. at that air that Nikki just did. Right, like, Nikki's yes. been really stepping it up, like, with a variety of her riding. Absolutely. I do love the style of her riding. It's so smooth. And her fast plants as well, she can really extend them out and go high. And the only girl doing that gap over the rail as well to a massive fakie. It's really, really impressive to the course builders this week. The concrete is so Oh, there's that fast plant 180. Wow, awesome. Fast plant 180 was clean. And she's going to throw a big one. Oh, and then she did the 180 off as well. I don't think I saw, see her do that in practice. That's a new one. All right, Angie Marino dropped okay, Next up is going to be Marino. Angie Marino. She's going to, to looks in. like she's aiming towards that bloom setup right now. I wonder if she's going to go for a gap or something. I think that she will be lining up a feeble, oh, a feeble off the side of the bloom obstacle. So hopefully we can see that in best trick later. That would be Absolutely insane. Like, uh, to see Angie step it up, because she's been messing around with her pegs a lot lately. And one of the things that she did when she was grinding the rail setup, like, I was so amped up for her when she did, like, her first, like, down rail. Like, that was so epic. So, yeah, to do this one is going to be a, a step beyond that for sure. This is scary when you have two uh, transitions, you know, with, with, like, sharp edges on it. Oh, feeble so that was cool. Oh, that and it's definitely scary. If your wheel slips any side of that rail, you're gonna come down. You need good position precision on that one. Maybe she's prepping up for the next feeble. Who knows? She gets that one, no problem. Yes, big All right, here's Paris bringing the speed. She just, she just did a trick on and off of it. We just miss it on the camera. But the crowd went crazy, I can tell you guys that. Look at that, quarter to quarter right there. So tell us about Paris as like a person, like what's she like? She's, she's honestly such a great friend. We get along really well. She's, she's funny as well. So, like, I can't say anything bad about her. She's just a really good human being. <laughs> That's always good when you have a, somebody you ride with on, like, a normal basis, you know, at contests, and then, like, you actually like that person. Like, it definitely works out in your favor, doesn't it? So, all right, next one coming in. We're going back up to the top. Emma Finnegan. Big question, are we going to see right, the feeble like bars spin right now? Passing over Emma, she's getting her bike dialed in by Dustin Orham. That is a very difficult trick to do. And Fuentes with that fast plant style, bunny hop coming down. Yeah, there you go, looking for that tech trick with the lip. So we're gonna keep it rolling and Angie Marino back to the course. Come on, Angie. Angie, proud Pomeranian owner, has her dog in the house. Leo right now going for that disaster stall. That's where you put the back tire over the coping. Angie, yo! All right, and we're back. Big Angie is on the course. You can see you can that huge air on that quarter pipe. Quarter pipe. You can see that Not scared to bring that speed to a bigger transition like that. It's probably like an eight-foot quarter pipe, I would say. Factor, it could Angie be nine, so maybe. Like, it's no joke. It's really, uh, that's the one that guys were using for the hike contest yesterday, but... Angie has uh, been supported by Vans for a few years so now. She, she's been such a great asset to the brand, and it's been really cool to see what she's been able to do. 
comes Paris, bringing the speed over to the transfer. Yeah. Nice T-Bog right there. That was beautiful. Yeah. Huge tire yeah. grab yeah. air. Yeah. Horseman up. Oh. oh, we got one trick on the way up. I wonder, do you, so do you think she would do a Sui no-hander in? I think so, definitely. I, you know, it's all a mental game, but I think she's got it for sure. Uh, there's definitely going to be a T-Bog down. Oh, there you go! That was nice. That was That's a serious move right there. My little brother would be proud wherever he is. He'd be loving that one. Ryan Nyquist would probably just shed a little tear. He's watching the live stream. <laughs> In a positive way as a proud, you know, coach. <laughs> Great run from Paris, right, as so expected though, go as expected. Back to the top, but I'm gonna go back up to the top right now. Um, Emma Finnegan, we have Emma, it looks like she's getting her bike fixed. Seems uh, uh, our, our man Dustin Orm is over there doing right his there. thing. He's Looking a the professional, Jerry you know, Batters. the I'm ultimate friend or, Emma, you know, so that means she's gonna helper, roll. anybody you need, he's there for you. You guys might recognize him from my YouTube channel. He's been in a couple of my videos, amazing person, brings, Brings such right positive here, energy to everyone, like on the course, and uh, he's such an asset to these events. The, every Emma event, Emma any kind of BMX Emma event, he really is. But Emma is back, back on the course. The Thumbs up. Line, We're doing this right now. She looks stoked. I'm not sure what happened to her bike. Did you did you catch it? I'm not sure. Oh, nice bus been on the bank there. Uh, Right, what are we lining up? Oh, again, LU transfer. Just under five minutes. That's and nice. Is making the most of her time out there. Yeah, the offset alley oop onto another quarter pipe. That's a tricky one. That, that never feels right. Manual up over the driveway box. Is she going to go for the feeble the setup right now? Popping up. Feeble. Oh! Bit of a high mom. <laughs> No, I think she's going to come around and try it again. All right, that means Nikki Fuentes dropping right, in right Nikki now. Nikki is back said, up right now. Just under five minutes, so we're just under five minutes like on this jam, so they have plenty of time. The they have, course. Hopefully they have all these tricks worked out. But beautiful fast plant is off the top of the lifeguard right tower. There. In. That's no we'll joke right there. The that is Escamilla a serious move. It's a big stretch. I would estimate that it's about five or six feet off the edge of it. I remember yesterday, Hooker actually did a proof on it. Look at that. Oh, oh, man, that's, that's so hard to be able to get that rollout in between those two rails. But What's that like, you think? Or spin to rock the fakie, pulling it no problem. 180 off. Nice. She's just so smooth. I actually love this style of her riding. We've only got to meet a couple of times, um, but we get along so great. It's good to see her again. Yeah, we were hanging out at Woodward last year together for when I was there. It was, it was really good. Maybe going over a little bit of strategy. Maybe talking about, yes, talking about her signature shoe. Again, it designed right, from Angie, BMX just want to tell you guys up. that she has a signature shoe with Vance. Cup. If you guys you are interested, you guys can go right to Vance.com slash BMX. You can support Angie, top. support BMX. It's a BMX specific shoe, so that means that, that, means that the that bottom on it angle. has the waffle the so waffle sole on it, so it's specifically designed for BMX. Angie with a nice grind down the rail. We talked about that a little earlier. She that did the feeble. For Marino. She was able to bring so it back. That Paris is gonna double take peg as well. The course right now. We have Paris Benega to Paris to go onto in. the course. As mentioned earlier, she was at the Tokyo 2020 Games. Nice yes, grind across grind. and down. Huntington, can we give it up? This is an Olympian that we have in our presence. More so than that, she is an unbelievable BMX rider, so focused. All right, also bringing the momentum back to the quarter pipe. Career. Uh, she's We're sneaking up on these camera guys. They're just not ready for it. No one's Paris ready for Paris. She comes out like a little awesome pitbull. She's got so athlete. much speed and power. You never know how high she's actually going to go. We're going to go back to the top. I'm told like that this <laughs> She really this does, though. She does. For jam she she five. is just so confident in her riding. I love that. I really do. All right, let's see if Emma can Emma. get this feeble to bar spin. The go crowd's going to go bank, crazy. Hop up. Feeble grind, bar oh, spin. Yes! Oh, go. so good. Right. Look at her. She's Retention. soaked. She's yelling right now. She's feeling good. Even that tire slide she just hit across that quarter pipe was nice as well. Wow, good to see her run coming together right now, especially after having a bike malfunction. Representing.
But what happens next? That's the question. Is she going to go for the feeble hard 180? What's on her? What? I wonder what she's going to be doing. Time will tell, I suppose. And that is nice little tabletop from quarter to bank. All the way from the UK. The crowd is loving this, guys. Everybody is having so much fun here. Energy is just great. Afterwards is going to be Angie Marino. Here we go, Fuentes. Oh, nice air so from Nikki. In the Very solid riding. The 180! Oh, no! It looked like she had that. It, it was looking good. I think she should get up and try again. That's the first time I've seen her do that. That was awesome. That's a big trick right there on that cold crew dumpster. 180 out of it. Uh, yeah, when in Huntington Beach, I guess you have to surf, right? Absolutely. I definitely do that one too to kill some time. Right, waiting for the next round to drop in. Looks to be Angie Marino. She's back in the course. Transferring oh, into the course. coal crew dumpster. Nice in from the lifeguard tower. Lifeguard That's a nice little line. Yeah, and it's blind. You don't even know where you're going oh, into until the last second. The Grind across and down, and clean as could about. be. All right, looks like Angie's eyeing up something. She got. Oh, another feeble down the rail. That's definitely a scary one. I think she was looking for something else though. So now we got Paris dropping in. It comes down Pitbull Paris. Coming with the bar spin up. They're so perfect. Looking for that Sui down. Her bar spins are honestly one of the best bar spins in the women's BMX. They're so clean. Oh, I, I know she wants to get that combination. She was eyeing it up yesterday in the blue thing. It's like back to the Jesse thing when she was manualing across it. Like, you know she wants it. Let's see if it happens. Bar spin up. Suey down! Oh, it was so good! Look, she's she's fist pumping. She's happy. That was sick. That was huge too. That was even bigger than the last one. She really had proper extension. And that can can. Did she go to the quarter? It looked like she it, 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 she didn't go to that quarter pipe. She was on the edge there. That was huge. Wow, Paris has had one heck of a run right there. But that is time for jam number four. We are wrapping it up right there, I think, right? Oh, this is just for Nikki. She's going to give us a little bonus trick. She wants to get that 180 out of the dumpster right now. Can she get it? This is just for all. She just did the ride pass and looked at it. She's like, I'm coming. Here I come. Pump her up. Bring it up, Huntington. Come on, Nikki. Oh, I knew she had it that go. That was awesome. Look, she's so all the girls are stoked right now. We're all cheering each other on. Oh, that was an awesome show from the girls. Yes, and that was the final jam for the women. So you guys seen all the women ride today. It's been amazing to see all of them bring their originality, all their original, you know, tricks and style to the course. And fans giving them an opportunity to do it. So cool. Rode the course. All right, so next up, we have a very, very special guest that is on our set right now. We have Mr. Dakota Roche, the Huntington Beach hero. He's going to be hanging out with us, answering a couple questions. So, Dak, we're going to be passing this microphone around, all right? We have a little bit of a malfunction. We're going to make this happen right now. But, Dak, what's it like to have an event like this here in Huntington Beach, California? Honestly? Like just growing up and seeing this event evolve and um, kind of change and the directions it's taken, having this Waffle Cup BMX contest, it's just been incredible. And like the amount of savage riding that's been done and all different types of riding as well. We're not just looking at just transition or just street. It's across the board. It's the most tech people and the people that can air the highest all in one place. So it's like it embodies BMX so well. I love it. You rode yesterday. You rode very well. It was awesome to see. You also got to do the course preview. So talk about this course. Tell us about how it feels to ride it. Honestly, like, it seems like courses are going very one direction these days. It's like it's either very street or very transition. So this kind of having a little bit of both of those elements and also incorporating real street obstacles, cellar doors, rail hops, 
a garbage, a dumpster, like a lifeguard tower. Like, who doesn't ever look at a lifeguard tower and think of, like, doing back? I'm just kidding. I never think of that. <laughs> but, no, the fact that, like, there's such a wide variety of obstacles on here just makes it such a good time. So, to tell you, you being from Australia, you know, do you have any questions for Dak about what it was like, like, growing up in the BMX scene in Huntington Beach? Definitely jealous the scene back home growing up was very small. So how was it riding with some of the best riders in the world? Now look at you, still killing it out here at Huntington Beach. Like, how was it riding in that scene? I honestly, I wouldn't trade growing up here for anything. I, I look back on all the good times that I had. Like, I guess riding with people that I always saw in magazines and in videos and you know, Sheep Hills, and like there's so many iconic riders that have come from Huntington, iconic spots, the dirt jumping scene has been crazy, and uh, not only that, all the events that have gone down in Huntington throughout the years, you know, it's like, it really is a special place, and uh, yeah, it's it means the world to me that it's still going on here, and things are still getting bigger and better, so. Definitely surreal for me being here and witnessing all this and being in Huntington Beach, also, you're not just the, like one of the best riders, you also designed the, the Vans Waffle Cup um, logo as well, didn't you? How did that come about? Yeah, so Vans reached out to me and like, I don't know, art's always been a pretty big part of my life ever since I was a kid. It's always been helpful. It's like, I'm either like, growing up I was like either skateboarding, riding bikes, surfing, or drawing. That was like basically my program. So. The fact that that's been a part of my life for so long and having it come out in ways like this, like being able to create something that is on these ramps and that people get to see is just like a dream come true. It feels so surreal. Like I love it. And it's like, it's just like another way to show creativity and Vans is all about that, which is like so special to me, you know? So thank you so much for hanging out with us, Jack. I just want to tell you that we are about to go into Jam 6 right here, okay? so. I want you to introduce these four riders. Just talk about them and uh, let people know what to expect. Oh, boy. So since we're going in reverse order, these are the top qualifiers from yesterday. And I'll tell you what, these are, this is the best of the best. These are the most savage bike riders on the planet right now, or at least some of them. Brock Rayford, man of extreme pop, could hop so high, super powerful, um, and well-rounded as far as like he could ride transition well, street well, just anything. Put anything in front of him and he could bunny hop over it, you know? So, and then we have Devin Smiley, who again, well-rounded, very focused on tech progression though. Some of the stuff he does in contest runs, no one else could even do if they had a month to learn it, you know? So it's like, and he does it first try in a contest. So it's like, that in itself is so mind-blowing. We have Kevin Peraza, who probably one of my favorite people to watch all around. Again, hybrid street, park, dirt, everything. And he could compete in anything, and he could win in everything, too. So he's such a special character, special soul. Loves BMX. His family loves BMX. It's just good dude. And then Dennis Anderson. I don't even know what I can say about him that hasn't been said before. The Eagle Lord from San Diego. Literally, like, again, so well-rounded, such a special human being. Some of the biggest things, some of the scariest things I've ever seen done on a bike, ever done by him. So it's going to be wild. I, I don't even know what else to say. I don't have, there's no, there's no words in the, in the human languages to, to explain how gnarly this is going to be. So that is true. Well, Dak, thank you for hanging out with us on set. Go get yourself a good seat. Enjoy this one. All right, my friend. Awesome hanging out with you this weekend, my friend. All right, so we are going to get ready to drop our first rider, Brock Rayford. What can you say about Brock Rayford? There's so much power, so much finesse, so much control, so much confidence as well. Whatever he does, he just, he just knows he's capable of it. He's going to jump over you know, something that's like six foot tall. I got it. I'm not scared at all. But like, it's going to get good real quick. So he's dropping in right now. What did, did you see anything that stood out to you yesterday that he did? In the high hop contest, I was even thinking, I was like, oh, imagine if someone jumped into the dumpster. Sure enough, he did, like, no problem. And, like, three times in a row. And I was like, wow, 
Like, it's not, everyone's not lying when they say he's got so much power. This is the first time that I've seen him compete in, in real life, so I, I'm stoked. Yeah, seeing him compete live, like, it, it, it's, it's, it's so cool. Like, once you see on video, you're like, oh, that guy could jump really high. But then when you see him do it in person, you're like, it's just not possible. Check out that line. He just tires across to hop up. The hop up Smith. Oh, look at that. Tie ride up to Tooth Marsman at the end there. Look at this. 180 to pegs. Oh, he's trying to get that manual on the way out. Like his his combinations that he was doing yesterday, Jack was saying, in the in the runs, it's just it just doesn't seem possible. Like he's just he's really leveled up over the past few years to a point where like he's reached his like, almost like an image of like this, like it's gonna get so untouchable. Like the guy's just, uh, he's just, he's just next level. He really is. But next up, my man Kevin Peraza, decade up, switch bar across. I have known Kevin for so long. Not only have I, has he been my band's teammate for years now, but he's also been my Monster Energy teammate. So we've been on so many trips together. We've shared so many memories, and I've gotten to see him do ridiculous tricks like that in person countless times. And he's just everywhere he goes, he looks, looks like a professional. Always a smile on his face. He's the crowd's favorite. It's just, he's one of those riders again that is just trick after trick after trick and lands it every single time. So clean. Honestly, wow, little secret, Scotty, oh, I have a crush well, on Kevin Praza. He, <laughs> I just love him. I, he's such a great rider, and he's such a nice person. No oh. yeah, I have so much fun he's hanging out with Kevin and his family. Journey. You know, everybody in his family Dennis. loves BMX. But here we go. Dennis Anderson hitting the huge air. Is he going to stand in the dumpster gap? Oh, and he's got it. The only person to jump across the dumpster. I, I, I came here with my brother. Oh, wow. Forget me and my brother. He just double tailed across the lifeguard tower. How is he upping it from yesterday? I wish I had my microphone working so you could hear my reactions. That is insane. This is the rider of the day right now. Like, not only is he the only one jumping the dumpster, but he is tricking over the dumpster, and I hope he can show that today. Yeah, he did do a tail over the dumpster yesterday. He got a flat tire, though. He hung up on it, so we'll see if he wants to come back for redemption. Brock back on the course. Gap the tires across the driveway. Nice tuck no hander. Brock is so well-rounded. Spit the bar spin on the up part of the life throw tower. On the edge, pegs. Oh, hard 180, but just couldn't get the pop. Didn't have the right lean off of it. Oh, man. I hope he can get back on his bike and get as many runs as possible, because I want to watch this jam happen for the rest of the day. It's so good. The crowd has been non-stop during this jam. And don't be fooled. Like, they're landing them all these tricks like it's nothing, but they are hard. They're just great riders. So what's Devin got? Bossman, manual, down, and he's still going down. Crane flip down. Honestly, the bike control on these riders is insane. The next level. One of my favorite riders to watch for such a long time, just because you never know what's going to happen. Look at, he just did a 180 backwards double tire ride down a rail. Like, can you imagine, like, trying to do that on a bike? I and flat out trying to imagine a feeble with only one wheel riding down. Like, no, I can't imagine riding double tire ride down backwards. Listen to the crowd right now. Look at that. Oh. But in Kevin Peraza style, he's up with a smile. The crowd is going wild. He's going to get redemption for sure. Yeah, as he crashed, the crowd was all together. They're like, oh, they were so invested in it. Like, I love hearing that because the truth is, there's a lot of people that aren't BMX riders that are here. So the fact that they are that invested in this, like, really makes me happy. But Dennis Sanderson back on course. Fast plan 360. I love the way he does that. It, like, it looks like it's going to be a bail for a second. He just magically comes around. Beautiful switch whip onto the cellar door. That is a switch Canadian nose pick. Foot jam, which is crazy. <laughs> I, that's such a hard trick. Oh! <laughs> Didn't need the rest of that one, huh? I think he's the only rider to be flipping the rad share ramp. That is actually one of the craziest tricks we've seen on it. So that, uh, even though he landed flat, 
It was still pretty cool to see. And when you said flipping over it, you weren't kidding. Oh, look at that. Brock just did a gap to nose really with a, like a hanger over on it, which is really technical. Tires up, switch 180, switch bar spin, super technical. Get a bunny hop over next, we'll see. Whoa, bar spin, the feeble, hard 180. So if you guys see that pink rail that was next to him as he rode across it, he actually did feeble grind hard 180 from flat on that yesterday, which was so nuts. Like, he's just in a league of his own when it comes to a hop. The, the guy is just, he, he's got a gift, he really does. Well, he's looking for something off that, but this is the type of riding that I was talking about earlier where they do so many trick combos and lines that my brain can't understand what's going on. It's so quick and they land so smoothly and they're already on to the next. Here we've got Devin. I speak to Fakey. Bossman in. Oh my god. That's the first that we've seen that. Wow. Up on the wall. Wow. Big Suey over that. A lot of people uh, don't realize, I mean, yeah, the majority of modern day BMX riders know him as a technical guy, the guy that does a lot of backlashes, manual combinations, but before that, he was doing a lot of uh, air trick stuff. So like, he's transformed he's transformed his riding over the years, and uh, it's cool to see he's still doing it, like by doing that, that suey over the top of that rad chair setup. So really, really amazing rider, always, always impressive. Kevin. Look at this tire slide on it. He just slid a bit too far on that one. <laughs> but he's up, he's still going. Okay, next ride is up. Dennis Anderson, what's he gonna do next? The speed's here. He fell in this gap yesterday, and he's got the redemption today, guys. Wow, that's a big gap from the big quarter pipe all the way across the quarter pipe, all the way across the thing. Oh, he's going for that tooth hanger over that. And it's like downhill too, so you've really got to lean forward on that, especially on that gap. You just drag back wheel a little bit on that end. Oh, he's going for it. Yo, we see that yesterday. I think uh, highest hop. I think I think we saw that. That was insane. No book can off. They're perfect, honestly. Such a good style, well-rounded rider. He can do everything. He really can do everything. So this is the last jam for a reason. You can see this is high energy. It's crazy to see. Switch whip over the top of the loading dock area. All right, bringing some speed to the gap to rail. Horseman to pegs, woo -hoo -hoo. That's a risky move. That's at least a 12 foot gap. Smith to 180 and he's going fakey up. Oh no, he lost it at the very end. I wonder what he was gonna do. What do you? What trick do you think he was gonna do? I'm, I'm thinking switch whip, switch whip. But he's looking so good, so controlled. Maybe it was just too much speed coming up on that bank. Oh. So the rules are to this: if you fall, the, the run is over. But that can happen. You put the foot down, you your first trick. I think that can happen. Top redemption, the back of the leg, but he's down. Very technical. Great set of free throws here, popping up to a tail head as it like makes the manual. He did a combo in prelims yesterday with the setup. Can he do it again? To back wall! Oh my goodness! What was that? It was almost like ice then. Honestly, don't know. But he's good enough that he can survive a situation like that. Here's Kevin, your old crush. <laughs> Uh, is so he's such a good rider, and it's always jam packed. Like he never misses a beat. It's like just every ramp he hits, just like that. Flair on the takeoff of that is so mellow. You need to really pop off that all your power and strength. Flair out of the dumpster, lands it. Oh my god! Oh, straight into that nosy 540. I gotta take the w microphone away from Natalia. She might, she might, <laughs> she might be able to handle this. <laughs> Honestly, that was an unbelievable run. Kevin Peraza, such a talented, unique rider. Like, uh, and like I said earlier, like his family just loves BMX. His brother, Victor, Eddie, David, they all ride BMX. Dennis Sanderson back on. You can see just that manual to tail up across. The only rider doing that one today.
He did the cannonball across! He sent the bike, grabbed the seat with both hands. That's a scary move over that one. It's blind. Think about that. You're sending the bike in front of you, hoping you're going to catch it, and it, you can't even see the landing. <laughs> Have you ever done a cannonball in your life? Fly out. Only fly out, and they are scary. If you miss the catch of the seat, you're done for. <laughs> That's all she wrote for you. Nice. That is a switch kind of swinger, too, to Barsman over it. That's like his opposite side of it, which is pretty crazy. Nice 180. Nice. He's got the half cab. That's a rare half cab. A lot of people were doing half cab downhill, but not many people doing it uphill. Go pegs. Hard spin. He's got the 180. Beautiful. There, and he landed with momentum, too. Like, it actually had some, like, volume following him. <laughs> he got lucky with that one, though. Whoa! Rare flare. I love it. <laughs> All right. Devin Smiley's going. What's he going to do after that combination? We're going to find out. Right, Devin's dropping in. Up Smith bar off. He's so good at everything that he does. Oh, looks like he was trying to jump over to the other rail then. That would be cool. Big table. Nice. Here we go. Feeble. Oh my god, backwards manual! Oh my god! Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. The level of riding that you are watching right now. Oh, that would have been cool. He was trying to do like downside Smith on top of it. Ride up the wall ride and then do it. So cool. Faraz is back in. I'm going to hold the microphone from Natalia on this one. Oh, but he did the flare. He got it on that one. Here we go on the rail. Tires to 180. He's showing you he can mess around with the rail combinations as well. The volley, you flare whip right into the pocket. 360. Amazing. <laughs> It's so cool to see how his riding transformed over the years. You know, like now he's brakeless. Uh, he's brakeless free coaster. He can do those G-turns every single try. Nobody can do that every single try. It's just not supposed to happen. It's such a risky move, especially in the middle of a contest run, but yet he seems to pull it every single time. It's like his go-to. When in doubt, let's do this. I used to think, I'm like, if somebody gave me like uh, $50,000 and said, you can you get $50,000 if you land this trick, like, but you, it would take me 12 hours at least, <laughs> at least. Oh, Dennis is back in the dumpster, the tail whip, and he's got it this time, yes, no flat tire at all. Wow, Dennis is really stepping it up right now. Wow, barely survived that one though, <laughs> that was a little scary. Dennis Anderson just had his son a year ago named Asa. He is here watching. I remember he actually was cheering for Dennis. He had his hands up in the air cheering for him. It was so cool. I loved it. It was actually, if you guys want, you can see it's on my story of the riding from yesterday. But here goes Brock Rafer dropping back in. What are we going to see, Natalia? Is he going to step it up or what? I think after watching Dennis's run and Kevin's run and Devin's, like, definitely have to step it up this time. Look at that. To Fakey, what's he got? Is it the switch whip? Oh! But that is insane. Yeah, so he was going for the tail whip, but doing a Fakey with that much speed for that long was so hard. He, you see how he just shot up there? It was like it wasn't even trying. All of this looks like they're not even trying. If I, if I tried, like you said, stuff would take me 12 hours, if not longer, not even. <laughs> they make it look like it's easy work. Uh, these guys are the best of the best right here. They they earned this last jam from yesterday. Crank flip to pegs. Switch pegs to 360 off of it. This is where he excels. He's been bringing some serious combinations to this upper rail right here. Annual up to bar spin. Perfectly executed. All right, he's coming back in. It looks like he's going to make his way over to the balloon setup. Oh, he won that ice pick combination once again. Getting up there, hopping fakey. I think he wants to do some sort of head cap trick in. Let's see. I think he's definitely going to step it up since he got it first go the last. Bar spin to ice. A fakey half cab in. That's insane. That's crazy. I think he's going to try again. Here we go. The crowd's getting around him. Let's see it. Bar spin, ice. Oh, he's up to the fakey manual by the looks. Wow. Yeah, he was really running out of real estate there. He was on the edge. 
Uh, I'm glad he jumped out of it, able to run off on his own own terms. That's always important. That's a that's the scariest setup on the course for sure. Once you get up there, like you you have to you have to be on your wheels, ready to go, or you're gonna be in trouble. Kevin dropping back in, bringing the speed. No! The... Oh, are you kidding me? I didn't expect to see that, Natalia. Neither did I, but we did say he has him every single go, so I guess he was thinking the same thing. That was insane. I love how he does that in down looking uh, alley oop player. Beautiful work. Downside tail up 180. These guys are doing those switch whips like it's just it's just easy now, which is nuts. Back to the bowl corner. Is he gonna go for it again? Here he goes. Oh, half cab. Oh, to down whip. Ooh, wow. It's like just think about this. We're seeing him do even better riding than we did in prelims yesterday. And it, I thought he was maxed out. I, I Everything he did, I was like, amazing. Like, that could have been first place run. If, if I would have saw that as first place, no questions asked. And he just upped the ante. I was thinking the exact same thing. And even that, I was like, you know, I would have saved that for best trick, but yet he's doing it mid-run. So what's he going to do for best trick? How can it get any better? What can they pull out next? So this is the last runs right here. This is Dennis Anderson. Oh, Dennis just missed that one, but he did do that awesome gap to manual across that driveway box, which is so cool. Manual, oh, it looked like he might have wanted that fast plant right there, but this is going to be the last run right here. So once Dennis is done, we, oh, hang five across it. Oh my goodness, and going downhill too, that is so scary. You gotta like lean forward to like a, a point where you're like, there's no return, but. Dennis Anderson, amazing run, riding yesterday, amazing riding today. Huge, you know, huge shout out to everybody that rode today. Men and women, they all just had so much fun out on the course. Like it was, I mean, for me and you sitting here watching, honestly, it was, it was awesome, wasn't it? One of the best shows that I've seen for sure, because it, it, the park, it allows you to do so much different riding. So, so Instagram, this is where we say goodbye to you. I hope you guys had fun watching this one. If you want to continue on watching, you can go to my YouTube channel or you can go to the band's YouTube channel and you guys get to see the best trick. But I hope you guys enjoyed the show. All right, here we go. Best trick is going to be starting pretty much any minute now. It's going to be 30 minutes, uh, all competitors, meaning that everybody that rode, not just the riders that rode today, but the riders that rode yesterday as well, Devin got the half cab off of that Barson, the ice pick. His just approach to riding is just second to none. It's just so unique. Let's not forget that this is not even the best trick right now. Like, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to step it up. That was amazing. I am so excited to see what they've got for best trick and for their remaining runs. No, I just want to reiterate that it's going to be $1,000 for women's best trick, $1,000 for men's best trick. We are going to see all the men and women riding right here. We have 30 minutes. So what's so cool about that is we're going to have a lot of riders in the course. It's going to be a lot of people going in a bunch of different directions. So hopefully with this 30 minutes, they'll be able to pace themselves. And uh, the, the judges, they have the hardest job right now. We get to sit back and enjoy it. We get to talk about what we see. Piece of cake. But imagine sitting there just going over this. Like, if Kevin does that, nose across the 360. If Dennis steps it up and does something crazy over that dumpster. Like, I don't know how they're going to make up their decision. How do you feel about sitting here compared to judging? Oh, we're sitting pretty right now, Scotty. Oh, my God. I would not want to be one of the judges. We get to be excited and yell and just watch the show, whereas the judges... You know, they get excited for a second and they have to quickly, like, you know, write down the scores or, you know, anything. But it's, 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 I can't wait to watch it, honestly. This has been, like, the most excited, like, part of the event. I, I know that, like, yes, the, the, the runs itself, amazing. I love seeing the guys be able to go out there and do their best riding. But, like, when you want to see a rider do their legit best riding, it's the best trick. That's where you come, you have one thing on your mind. You have that one trick that you want to stare down and do whatever it takes to get to that point. So like, this is going to be nonstop. This is, the, 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 the people that are sitting in the stands, like they are going, I hope they're hydrated. That's all I got to say <laughs> at this point. But we're going to be starting this thing any minute. We're waiting for all the riders to get to the cores. They're going to get warmed up a little bit. They'll probably warm up as they go. So we'll see a couple riders cruise around trying to, you know, read the cores, uh, you know, figuring it all out. But 
uh, just think about it, because the riders, you know, a lot of them are going to be riding today. They haven't ridden since yesterday. It's going to be the first time on their bike. It's like, oh, here you are, to a best trick contest. Imagine if you showed up to, like, an event, and it's like, oh, here you go, Natalia. Here's your bike. Give us your best trick. I definitely would be nervous. The, the heart would be pumping. You know, they haven't had much of a warm-up on the course, and they've only got 30 minutes to throw down their best, hardest trick that they can do. Um, again, like you said, there's going to be a lot of riders on the course. I hope that we're all aware of each other and there's no crashes throughout. Um, I'm excited to see what goes down. Do you know if the girls are riding with the, with the men? Yes. It's going to be a mixed event, so it's, everybody's going to be riding together, which is really, really cool. I like that. Um, you know, I'm just hoping all the riders are going to be very respectful of each other and just, just very conscious about what's happening around them. Because when it comes to a best trick, there could be a crazy gap that nobody's even tried before. So you, you, you got to make sure you, you have people working in your corner. You know, tell your friends, say, hey, let somebody, let them know I'm coming from this angle. You know, that's, that's, and that works for not just a best trick, but even if you're at a skate park, you know, make sure you avoid any collision, anything like that. You don't want to be in a situation where you're going to be ruining your session and somebody else's from getting hurt from collisions. Just be smart about it. I know you get caught up in the moment, but just take your time. Make sure you, you know, you, you check all the boxes and make sure that you guys are going to be safe moving forward on this. But I wonder what's going to possibly be like the actual obstacle. Like what's going to bring the most riding out of it? Like what do you think looking at it? Oh, there's so many different possibilities. I think it'll be the the bloom obstacle. There's so many different approaches you can take to it. So diff so many different tricks that you could do that we probably not even thought of yet. Uh, but there's also like the dumpster that someone else might try and jump it. Even if Dennis tries to do the the whip over it again, like that is insane. So there's one thing I want to talk about with you. I want to get your inside opinion. We just watched all six heats. Saw amazing riding. I want to ask you, who do you think we could possibly see at the top of that podium today? Who do you think is going to take it all, men and women? Who's on your Who's on your mind right now? Like, what What do you think after that? Like, and it's, it's all just our opinion of what we just watched. You know, the judges they have the hard job. They're the ones that have to go over every little trick that they did. But just a riding that stands out to you. Who's on your mind right now? Okay, for the women, um, I think Nikki did really well. I think Nikki did really well. Paris is always a standout with the height that she goes. Um, they're my top two. I'm trying to think of a third. The, everyone rode amazing. It's hard, it's hard to choose out of the out of all the amount of riders. Uh, for the men, crowd favorite is is Kevin. Devin, I think, rode really well. Um, even the heats earlier on, like I I can't choose. I, I don't know who to choose. I can't call it. If I had to place a bet, I'd just pick everyone. <laughs> That's an easy way out. I like that. But me watching it, you know, riders that stood out to me, you know, I, I definitely agree with you. I think Devin rode amazing. The stuff that he was able to pull off, unbelievable. Kevin Peraza. Kevin Peraza stayed consistent throughout. Um, you know, there's a couple tricks that, yeah, he might have tagged doing the, let's say when he did that nose wheel across and, and tagged on it. But just think about everything else that he was able to pull and run. Like, I could see him definitely being close to the top on there. But when it comes to the women, I think, I think Paris, I think she rode really solid. I think she was very well, well versed with everything. She was using the rails, she, uh, you know, like the, she grinded a, a cross and down on the uh, driveway box. She did those huge errors. She was doing the big can-can. So like, you know, she's sticking out to me for sure. Um, but when it comes down to it, I don't have to make that decision. And I'm very glad I don't have to. Have you ever judged a contest before? Have you ever had to sit there and do it? Uh, we've done some practice contests um, back home in Australia, and I, I've done the judging. And I, even then, and it didn't mean anything. I did not want to do it, but I did. And look, it's a hard job, and I do not envy the, the judges at all. Um, I would never want to be one. So, can, you know, shout out to them. Yeah, when, when the last time I judged was actually for a Pro Cup. We were doing the one at Woodward. Uh, it was like a, almost like one of the qualifying one things. Like, um, and I had to judge it, and after that, I said, I will never, ever do one of these again. It was so stressful. I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders as I was sitting there trying to, like, decide who rode the best. And, like, I go over my head for so many different things. Because me as a BMX rider, for riding as long as I did, and for riding the way I did, I have such, like, you know, an open opinion to different styles of riding. So, like, when I would see people had these amazing runs going super high, and then when I saw these people have these technical runs too, I'm like, I want to reward them, you know? Like, and, like, trying to make that decision, like, it's something that's, like, in BMX, it's, it's like something you really can't do. Because it, the truth is, it's like, 
it's an it's open to your interpretation, right, of what you you like as as a as a rider, as a fan, and everything like that. So I, I think it's it's really hard to be a judge, and and part of me is like, BMX shouldn't be judged in a way, but hey, if we have events like this, and we can get all these guys having a great time, and everybody's leaving with a smile on their face. Let's do it, absolutely. So, so what was the last contest you actually rode? Uh, the last contest I rode was the Olympics in Tokyo last year. So yeah, I think it was a year maybe today. Um, and that was the last contest during my run. I did my knee and I was lucky just to stay on the bike and then came home and had surgery straight away. So I'm definitely feeding to get back out there and I, um, I can't wait, it's not too much longer now, but it's a long time off the bike. So I'm, I'm nervous, I'm scared. Um, but I'm also excited. You're no stranger to this injury that you've had. You know, you've had multiple knee injuries at this point. Um, is this the longest you've been off your bike so far? Has there been longer? This is definitely the longest uh, with a knee injury because uh, since I've had six now, I've had to do <laughs> six. I <laughs> I, no, I've met some other riders. <laughs> met some, I've, met, I've met some other riders that, that have like eight, and and but like mine's on the same knee, so I just it's bad luck. But it was a two surgery part, which is why it was longer than 12 months. Because it's usually a 12 month recovery, but because I had two surgeries for it, you know, I had to wait longer. So it's been about probably, it's going to be about 16 months off the bike, and that's such a long time to and you know to wrap your head around it and get the confidence back. So right now, like, are you able to like pedal a bike? Are you able to like cruise around a little bit, like not trying to ride ramps at all? Like, do you ride like a road bike or anything like that? Yeah, I can definitely ride around now, which is nice. And I just go for, you know, a stroll, I mean, like, like a cruise around the beach. Uh, but I'm hoping once I get home from this trip that I'll start pumping around the, like a racetrack and just get that confidence back under control. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping to start competing by the end of the year, but we'll, we'll see how I travel. Just remember to pace yourself, all right? Just take it, you've already taken it slow. A couple more weeks won't hurt, so just slow yourself down, pace it, and just, I know it, it's, you know, in a situation like me, like, you know, the truth is I'm never gonna be able to ride my bike again, you know, the way I used to. And, um, and this isn't a sob story or anything. I'm glad I rode for as long as I did, but like, you know, I know it's been a long time off your bike, but you're gonna be able to get to do it again. You're gonna be able to get out there and compete and everything, so. But we're going to get uh, Best Trick started shortly. Any second now, we're giving the guys a couple minutes to get warmed up. So just hold on. And uh, it's open to the whole course once again. Just want to let you guys know, men and women, and it's all the riders from the prelims as well. So uh, you're going to see riders you hadn't even seen ride today. Um, so the judges are getting ready. The announcers are getting ready. The riders are getting ready. We will be starting this shortly. And I promise you, you do not want to miss this one. This is going to be the most wild 30 seconds ever. And oh, we just got the countdown. It officially started. You guys are about to see some crazy riding right now. I, I, and this is where it's going to get difficult because, like, we're going to be watching multiple riders at the same time. Ben was uh, sending some uh, tricks over that yesterday. I wonder what he has in mind today. X up ride into 180. Ooh. It's going to be mayhem. Absolute mayhem. Like someone, imagine like someone like W who like rides full speed all the time. Like th that's got to be hard for him to get confidence to be able to do his tricks when everybody's dropping in like this. Or maybe he'll just do that amazing seat bound flare to foot jam on that one. But here's a, oh, there's Benny. Benny was telling me he wanted to do uh, tires across that flat thing um, right in front of the stairs to truck driver. Yeah, I was like, if you see it, yeah. I got faith in you. Jack Curly up, nose, oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. They'll be going towards the core pipe. Oh, he just did a seat bounce, but we, we, uh, we went to a different camera angle. I think they thought his run was over when he sat down. <laughs> There's Casey Starling, another New Jersey rider. Awesome to see him, he's on bands, wow. Whip to bar, that was pretty cool. You ever did a tail whip to bar? I haven't, I haven't. I know that Hannah Roberts has, she did it when she came to Australia and I was like, oh my God, what the hell? 
Yeah, I was never good at uh, tail up to like late bar spin combinations because I always went to my pedals. So like a lot of people that are good at that, they're able to go to crank arms. So it was always really hard for me. I, I could do like bar spins to tail whips, but like I just didn't love the, uh, I did not love doing the tail up to bar spins. So. Is that Pat Casey? That's Pat Casey! <laughs> yes! This is great news, guys. Pat hasn't ridden since he got hurt at X Games, riding the 110s. It was really sad to see. He did a huge air in the quarter pipe, over-rotated, and then uh, ended up getting whipped off. So seeing him back on a bike today is really, really cool. Pat's a beast. I, I saw that firsthand, and uh, we were all scared. We weren't sure what was happening, and yeah, the over-rotation, definitely scary. But what's even scarier is so many people on course and trying to swerve and weave through everyone, especially if you're coming with speed. Wow. That will, I, I'm not sure. We don't have a list of the riders that are competing in best trick. We just, we can only see from the screen. Yeah, I'm having a hard time identifying who that was. Oh, beautiful 360 look back right there. Yeah, we, uh, there's a lot of people that we won't be able to recognize from these camera angles just because it's so far away from us. So we'll do the best that we possibly can. But I know this is Casey. <laughs> so here we go. Whoa, oh, oh, he slipped off, but he's all right, though. Casey, oh, oh my goodness. The stuff that he's been doing lately, he does these crazy flares off the smallest things. Pat sending the gap, getting acclimated. Oh, this is going to be fun if Pat's on the course. Jesse Gregory's on the course. Except air. I just want to give the audience a reminder real quick. The awards are coming up right after this best trick. So we're going to send it on down to Daryl now. He's going to take care of it all. But that trick right there, I saw Max do that yesterday. I, I came up to him this morning. I was like, that was awesome. Benny! Oh, so close. Trying to do the five cap off. Just met Benny this weekend for the first time. Had so much fun. Um, just really great conversation as well. Really excited to see. Exactly. Oh, what is that? Is he going to do backlash across? Backlash across? Imagine that. Like, brakeless, free coaster that's like just like no control at all. Find somebody. It looks like Ryan Mills. Oh my. I know what he's going to do. What? He's going to do hand plant 180 drop in off of that oh. thing. He has to. That's what he does. That's what he does. Yeah. That's exactly what he'd have done. That, yeah, wow. Look at all these riders that are coming out that we didn't know they were going to ride best trick. This is going to be a really good one. Everyone's just eyeing up, trying to focus on what they're going to do right now. Who we got? Yeah. I think we're all just trying to be conscious of each other. 180. Oh, what do you think? Is, it, is he going to go for the, uh, the down whip again? I think for sure. I think that's a trick that he's setting up for right now. Um, I think. Me personally, like I, I think that nose 360 is dynamite. That's a that's a crazy, crazy combination. Um, I don't know how he feels about it. You know, he might feel for oh. Is that, is that I can't I can't make out who it is right now. I can't see with the angle right now that we have for this camera. I'm, I'm telling you, there's people that weren't in the competition. I'm trying to turn around right now and get a, a live look at it to be able to identify everyone. <laughs> We're doing the best we can right here. All right, who's that, Pat? Yeah, Pat's doing a flare. Colin Varignac, look at this. Jumping up on top of the lifeguard tower. And Casey from New Jersey. I saw him trying fakey front flips a lot in the competition. I wonder if he's going to try some kind of combination of fakey front flips. I definitely hope that we do see the fakey front flip. The crowd loves it, and it's such a scary, hard trick to do, and I don't think anyone else is doing it here today on the course. So I hope we see that. Uh, from, from the women, I hope I see Angie try the feeble on the side of the bloom obstacle on the, on the lifeguard tower um, into the other side. I think that would be insane. Anything on that lifeguard tower is special. Benny in the background going for their, you can see that tire ride across. The truck driver. Oh my goodness, I'm going to peek and see if I can identify who this is real quick. 
Turn the other direction. Miss. Couldn't figure out who it was again. I'm trying here. The mystery rider. Matt Casey getting acclimated on the double right now. Yeah, I haven't seen... Um... Oh, W with the flip can-can across. That was beautiful. That was awesome. That was huge. I, I am curious to know what Pat is lining up over that gap. I'm not sure what he's going to do. And then he's got it perfect that time. It's crazy to see like how hard it was for him to try it, and he just did it like it was easy. I watched him in Best Trick at X Games last week, and he pulled every trick that he wanted first go. He, he is just so consistent in everything he does. It's funny you bring that up because I told Kev Kevin, I said, that was the trick of the event. I thought that was the best, uh, sorry, the, I thought that was the uh, event of X Games, the best one. And I said, you were the MVP of it. I was like, so good on you. <laughs> oh, he, 360 knows. Try it. I'm going to identify again. <laughs> I think we just saw uh, the cameras didn't catch that he was trying a fakie front flip as well. So hopefully we can see that landed today. Oh, it's always scary getting up the top on that bloom of a school. I would, there's only, you know, there's only one way down. <laughs> so I also met Benny just this weekend. They go by they, them, actually. Here's Kevin the Nosey. Oh, his wheel just clipped on his way down. Oh, it's just starting to heat up now. There's Ryan Mills on the top, eyeing something up. Here's Chad. Oh. All right. So let's see. Pat's bringing some speed across. I wonder what he's eyeing up on that thing. He's been straight jumping it over and over. Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace. So I just want to give you guys an update. There's 12 minutes of this best trick right now. And um, so far, like, I'm trying to think of who I saw. I didn't get to see everything yet. Oh, backlash all the way across. Had the bail and spun off of it. But like my favorite trick I saw so far was definitely Kevin doing the uh, half cap down whip off of it. I, for me, but I didn't get to see everything because we're only looking through the camera angles. Oh, that 180 front flip! I hope we see that landed. But yeah, definitely Kevin's trick is a standout right now. Here comes Dovey. Oh, the crowd's going wild for that one. Here's Devin. Bar ice. Fakey. Oh, my God. That would be insane. <laughs> All right. That was ridiculous. He needs to get back up and do that trick immediately. Johnny Rakes, double bar spin up. Wow. Benny back on course, bringing some speed. Up rail to 180 bar. Pat, we'll go for the cash roll over it. <laughs> he did it. Is that what you expected? I was thinking in my head, I'm like, what's Pat good at? What will he do? And I thought cash roll. I was like, there's no chance. Not over that. We're coming off an injury and just coming back with a cash roll over that. Ridiculous. Wow. Johnny Ricketts just did up rail tires to 360 crank flip. All right, here comes Ryan Mills on the top. Oh, you can see, you see how he's starting to dip down? He, he's the first person to ever do that trick, so. Ooh. All right, Max is heading over to the dumpster. Pegs to bump. Wow, I wonder what he wants to do. He looks like he's like almost like trying to bump and like do a trick, like a grind on the side or something. That's exactly what I was thinking, but the, the ramp's quite small and he just powered straight over top of it. We have a fake it manual! Oh, wow. This stuff's no joke. It's so scary. That was nuts. That was, I couldn't imagine being brakeless, free coaster, just ripping across that. Eddie Peraza just did X up ride through the dumpster to 360 out. That was ridiculous. Up next, Ben Wallace. Bringing some speed. What's he going to do? I just want to tell you guys again, $1,000 for men's best trick, $1,000 for women's best trick. We got Emma Finnegan on the course right now. Let's see if she 
wants to get that combination on the ledge. It looks like she's going for it. She did the feeble. Oh, she's trying to do the hard 180. I know you guys didn't see it in the camera angle, but Nikki with that 180 again on the outside. I wish I could go be Coach Nat right now and I would tell her to 180 T-Bog out of that. That would be awesome. Oh, oh, he's done it. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Devin just did the combination. <laughs> Oh, this is getting wild. So if I'm going to estimate, there's probably about eight minutes left in this best trick. Gas bar, 360 to nose across that. We identified the rider. <laughs> Max in pegs to whip. Oh, straight to the nuggies. Now Chad is trying to do that nose up across. I'm assuming he's gonna go down because he's wild like that. Matt, backlash, oh, he flew off of that thing. There's just so much momentum being carried across that. Can you imagine doing like a fakie bail with no breaks, no nothing? Whoa, Ryan Williams, Ryan Williams is on the course. Ryan Williams is on the course right now. What is happening? Where are all these guys coming from right now? And oh, exactly what you called. And it's crazy. It's crazy to see that they're all throwing down these massive tricks and some of them don't even have helmets on. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that for sure. I definitely wish everybody was wearing a helmet uh, to each their own. I just hope that they keep it rubber side down today. Kevin knows 360. He did it. Why do you cheer so loud when Kevin lands his stuff? What was that? Sorry. I, I just noticed you've been cheering really loud when Kevin lands his stuff. Because he's so impressive, okay? <laughs> Honestly, though, it, it, it's nuts. I'm just as big of a Kevin fan, so. But Ben Wallace just did amazing court seven. 360 to nose. Wow. Yeah, Ben Wallace has spun a court seven over the top of that gap. Amazing. I think that's Dan Crook, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you guys saw that on the rail, but I just want to let you guys know, he was trying to do up uh, feeble to two to tail whip up the rail. That's a crazy combination. Dubby, big backflip. What do you think Dubby's eyeing up? I feel like he's gonna try a backy bar over it. That, I feel like that's what he's eyeing up over it. Um, it's definitely a backflip com combination. Awesome with the backlash across. You no, know, just at the last second, you could see like it was locked in for a second, but getting that wind up. Casey Starling, fakie front flip. Oh, he over rotated. Back up on his feet though, thankfully. All right. Kevin is back on the course. What? Oh my God. What do you think that was going to be? I thought he was going to go up and grind, but then maybe he wanted to jump in and couldn't pick between the two. I don't know. I'm not sure. Here comes Ryan. Oh. My Mills is going for that. It's going for that hand plant drop in. It's tough because you got to travel some distance. And when you do the hand plant drop, your momentum kind of goes straight down. Whoa, Justice Spree just did tooth big hanger across that whole life, lifeguard tower. Dovey, Dovey's working. He keeps on sending that blip. The crowd loves it though, every time. Ryan Williams, what's he doing? So weird, no jeans, no pads, no helmet. It's weird to see him in casual clothing on the bike. Because usually we'll see him jumping the mega ramp, fully fully padded up. I didn't even know he was here, to be honest, but there's 15 minutes left. Yeah, that's definitely not Ryan Williams' bike. He, he's brakeless. I'm pretty sure that has brakes on it from what I can see. Pat's on the course. Oh, what's he going to do? Uh, he's not done yet, that's all I know. All right, Gaspar. Oh, that was so close! Go, Matt Clawson back in. Backlash. Yes! He did it! 
Woo! This crowd is going nuts right now. Everybody is loving it. And that's such a cool dude. I'm so glad he got that one. All right, what do you see, Natalia? I was just thinking in my head, do we have anyone with the skill capacity to imagine doing a 180 to fake you over the whole bloom thing? <laughs> that would be insane. That's... <laughs> but... Oh, is he trying to get that whip? Max is definitely eyeing up that whip. I see Chad's going for the snow wheelie over and over again. Dovey is doing the seat bounce under flip flare like a thing to foot jam. Like that's so, I, I didn't, can't believe that's a real trick. Casey got that fakey front flip. The crowd's loving it. Woo, that was sick. So exciting to see him pull that. He was trying for so, so long yesterday. A few attempts today. He'll be stoked on that one. Oh, going for that tooth hanger over. Such a wild contest, and to see it firsthand is insane. X up right to three out. That's pretty cool. All right, Gaspar's back in. Nose. Oh, that's going to be so hard to get that 360 right, get locked in that nose, and then you got to keep that balance going across. Johnny Rakes, double bar spin to X up lander. Max Wu back in. Pat's pedaling. Pat's pedaling. Now what? What's he gonna do? I don't know. Uh, okay. Do you, do you think that Pat might try to 180 or something? Do you think he's like gauging speed right now? I wouldn't put it past him. He's the king of fakies and all that type of thing. So I, I, I could see him trying it. Um, if he lands it, that's a different story. I'm not sure. So we have 12 minutes in this jam. I was just informed, 12 minutes. That is the official time left. So that means we get 12 minutes of madness. Ryan Williams on in board shorts. He's eyeing up something. Dubby did the seat bounce under flip flare to foot jam. Clean as could be. Didn't even bounce off of it. That was amazing. Proud of your countrymen? I am proud. <laughs> I am proud. And you know what? He's just so young that he has so many years left ahead of him. And what, he, what he's going to do in the future, who knows? All uh, right, what, what do we got next? Oh, he got the whip out of the dumpster! Nice! This might have been off camera, but Max Boo just did the dumpster grind all the way across the Colt setup, and then he hit the transition and tailed out of it. It was so nice. Chad knows really up, across, and down! Johnny Rakus just did the double barsman, the X up land, a two crank flip in. Banny's going for the, uh, looks like an X up grind on the down rail. Dubby sending the big flip over. Riders get on there. Pat's pedaling over to the ramp. Another straight jump across it. Tap in. Oh! He just, he just went face first into the ground without a helmet. Ouch. That looked rough. Wow. 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 That was bad. <laughs> Throw over there, your crutches. Oh, that was scary. Ryan Williams on the course. Flare across the channel. Oh, man. He sent the flare across the channel. That was crazy.
Eddie is shutting down that dumpster, I'll tell you that. He's been doing so many combinations across it. Matt Casey is eyeing something up. There's still time left on right now. It's a bit wild with all that's going on around us. We're trying to keep up with this. This is mayhem. Absolute mayhem, but in the best way possible mayhem. Seven minutes remain in the jam right now. Just got word of that. All right, Gaspar's going for that 360 to nose. That looks so hard to do. That, that's such a technical combination. Here goes Casey Sarlin. Uh, 270 whip to Smith. Matt Casey pedaling for the center. 1A! All right, Pat is back up on his feet. Natalia, you knew it. How'd you know? Uh, and that's just what he does. That's Pat Casey. I called it. That's insane. Becky oh. Bond called that one. That's nuts. Honestly, this is such a good trick contest. Tell us what happens next. Oh, I gotta wait. Gotta wait and see. Here we go. What's this? Oh. I, I'm trying to figure out what Ryan's going to do. I, I can't call that one. Not just yet. <laughs> yeah, Ryan just sent that flare transfer with clean as could be as well. Ben Wallace, 540 flare. Beautiful work. Got Devin. Oh, 180 backwards tires on the down rail. Are you kidding me? All right, Dan Crook has been sessioning this rail. He's got some serious combinations. Here we go. Feeble, toothpick to tail whip. You see that? That's crazy. Gaspar. Oh, all right. That was closest so far. He made it up on top of it and rode away from it at least. Didn't have to run off of it. So Emma's on the course right now. It's going up. Feeble. Oh, so close. Pat, 180. Oh, all right. He's close though. He's just got to get that speed right and he'll be able to set it in there. Casey just did, if you guys could see that in the far corner of your screen, did three flip to Smith. Oh! W just went excessively high. <laughs> he can't help himself, huh? He just he just has to go full full out. I can't even imagine the feeling of just floating there, so I can I can see why he does it. Big tra flare transfer. There's so many riders that I can't watch them all. I, I've only got two eyes. <laughs> Eddie Peraza in the dumpster. Nice. Exa Bride looks like he's trying to spin out of it. Justin Spriet heading towards the tower. What does he want? All right, Dan Crook is heading towards the rail. Casey's on the half pipe. That's far. Oh, that was the closest yet. You think he's going to go 180 or 360 out of that? I feel like with the momentum and the speed he has, it's going to be a 360, but it could be a, it could be 180 to fakey. But I can imagine it'll probably be 360. We got Angie on course now. Nice to see a girl out there amongst the crowd. What's she got? I think here comes Pat. The fake. Oh! Bit of a hard, heavy hit to the face there on the ramp. I feel like maybe if he had stayed in the fakey. Instead of half cab out, it might have been a better off scenario. He's up! Woo! Pat is up on his feet. The crowd's cheering. Yeah, he cash rolled it already, which is crazy. Devin's just sessioning that rail. He's doing 180 backwards tires, so 180 consistently. Wallace mate with a huge flare. Delby's back on course right now. Heading to the quarter pipe. Flair, one for Flatty. Beautiful work. Really want to see Dan get this combination on this up rail. Tower. Alright, here goes Gaspar back in. 
Oh, he, it looked like he could have got the pop out of that one, but it just, it just bit when he was spinning on that. I just want to give you guys a three minute warning right now. If we're going to get down to the nitty gritty, these guys are starting to run out of time. If they wanted to get their best trick, they need to get it done right now. Who do you think the next one in the Atlanta trick is going to be? Oh, I'm not sure. I think maybe this one on, on the bloom obstacle. Trying to get that two thirds of the whole thing there. Let's see what's going on. What's Ben got? Massive flare at height. Just impressive seeing how high they go. Probably only two minutes remaining. Kevin coming up. 180. Oh! 540 cab out of that one. The riders looking, eyeing up stuff to do. Not much time left. What's Emma got for us? I want to see this feeble hard. Let's get it. Feeble hard one. Oh, so close. Oh, upper manual backflip potential. Oh, he's doing 540 flare transfer. <laughs> Ryan Williams is so ridiculous. He just shows up and just sends it. The question is, whose bike is that? Do you recognize that? Is that Andy's bike or something? It, it might be. I'm really not too sure whose bike it is, but just coming out five flare, that, that gap, I, I wouldn't have called that one. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, it's really hard to do on that one because it's not a steep enough quarter pipe to go that fast um, and go that high doing that trick. So, a huge. I mean, it's Ryan Williams. It, it, we we know to expect the unexpected when he's on. Here goes Wallace heading to the big quarter pipe. It's almost like reaching the the bars in there. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, or a, a flat tuck maybe at height. Yeah, I agree. So we're at 45 seconds right now. This is crunch time. This is going to be mayhem. Like, it, this is just going to be rapid fire. Well, Ryan Williams officially has a helmet on. So this is going to get good. Enrico's X up. Wow, what a combination off at the end of it. That was so cool. Here comes Ryan Williams. My 40 flare. Oh, he lands it. <laughs> this guy is so ridiculous, man. He just shows up and sends that. All right, we have final 10 seconds right now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, and that is going to be it for the best trick. We're sending you guys to commercial. We'll get the awards after this. Welcome back, welcome back. We are getting ready for the awards. We just had the best trick come go down. Like, what tricks stand out to you? Like, what tricks in that best trick would you see possibly be on the top? Uh, Kat, Pat didn't pull it, but the 180 to fake over the whole thing. The oh, yeah, the cash roll. Um, 20 seconds to go, Ryan Wilm comes out. No shirt on, no pads. Five players over the channel gap. Like, I don't think I've seen a five player travel that far before. Honestly, thinking about it now, like watching the rest of the Emacs Park, nobody really does carving five players. And that was a huge, that's at least 12 feet. I'm going to say on the low side of 12 feet. So, yeah, that was huge. Now, some riders that stick out to me for the best trick, um, Chad, Chad Curley did that nose really up and across and down. But we're going to find out right now. I'm going to send it on over to my main man, Daryl, now. And he's going to take it from here.
details for the Showdown Skateboard event, the Duct Tape Invitational. You can also find out all of the happenings going down in the Van Doren Village over the course of the entire week and next weekend. It's unbelievable how much goes down in terms of support for the sports, also for the community and the culture. We are about to find out which riders not only get those very unique design trophies by Dan Thomas, DTM Design, and Denim Cox, but the biggest chunk of that $75,000. All right, Huntington Beach, are you still with me? Awesome, I love that energy because we are about to give out our awards. We're proud to be here at the Vans US Open of Surfing in Huntington Beach, California for the Vans Waffle Cup. Big thank you to Vans Cult, The Bloom, Radshare, all of our partners and the city of Huntington Beach. I want to, want to give a sh shout out to our athletes and his our f fans. I'm about to welcome up somebody to help give out $75,000 in prize parity equal for men and women's trophies designed by Dan Thomas, Deep Design, and Denim Cusks. Let's welcome up the Vans VP of Events, Promotions, and the Ambassador of Fun, Steve Van Doren. All right, to give out our first award, this is the Rad Share Award. One person at this event showed heart above and beyond anyone else, lent a hand when they weren't asked, and made the riders feel welcome. They embody what Rad Share is all about. Let's put our hands together, winning this trophy in $1,000, Justin T. Oro. Dustin showed heart. He helped every rider who had any problems with their bike being a mechanic, but most of all, that signature smile on his face. Dustin has one of the biggest hearts there is. Let's give it up for Dustin. award with one of our other partners, Colt Crew BMX. We had Robbie Morales in the house, not only sponsoring and supporting the riders, doing the dumpster unique build where we saw the tricks go down. Here to hand out this very unique design Vans trophy and a thousand dollars in cold hard cash goes to the rider who gapped it with the tail whip, Dennis Anderson. So proud of Dennis out here. He rode with his heart, being cheered on by his whole family. Also his new addition, having the family member of the Ennerson being out here, unbelievable to see. What a super dad, all around rider, and winning that award is no easy feat. Dennis, come on down, brother. Yeah, let's hear it for Dennis Anderson. All right, well, there is another award. You can see how cool this trophy is. Riders Choice Vans Off the Wall and also a tall can for good times. That means that all the other riders decided who would get the cold hard cash and this DTM design trophy. When all was said and done, let's call them back down here again. Dennis Anderson! Yeah, Dennis, 
the Riders Rider. Unbelievable. As I said, his dad, his mom, his family's out here. The newborn, the Anderson clan is just cheering him on. Look at that whole bolt of those trophies, loud and proud. And give it up for Dennis Anderson. All right, well, Steve Van Doren just notified me that there's been a gentleman who helped work on this event, bringing the Vans BMX Waffle Cup together. He's been part of the Vans family for a very long time. How about we give a birthday shout out to the one, the only, Mr. Andrew Mapstone. Where are you at, my man? There we go. Andrew Mapstone, come on down here. How about it? Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew Mapstone. You worked so hard to help make this event possible. Very cool. All right. Well, we did just have our best trick competition go down. Men and women's on the same course at the same time. We are going to call up the first place finisher to get a pound and some cash and a high five from Mr. Steve Van Doren. But let's put it together for our third and second place finishers because they are also going to get a nice little chunk of cash for their efforts. But we're not going to call them up. So let's put it together. Winning $200 for third place, Jesse Gregory. And in the women's best trick competition, getting second place in $300. Keep it going for Nikki Fuentes. All right, and we are going to ask to come down for the first place, $1,000 in cold, hard cash. In cold, hard cash is going to go to the Vans Colt Rider. Put it together for Angie Marino. Awesome. Let's give it up one more time. Jesse Gregory, Nikki Fuentes, and Angie Marino. Jesse Gregory getting some cash right there, getting third place right there at the women's best trick. Thank you very much. One more time, give it up for our women riders in best trick. All right, well, our men's best trick took place at the same exact time. We had a very late entrance, and he made his presence known, scoring $200. Let's put our hands together for Pat Casey. In second place, getting $300. Keep it going for Matt Clausen. And coming in first place, I'm going to invite down here for the men's. $1,000 is going to Chad Curley. Chad Curley coming on down. Also a newly minted father. So cool to have his wife and also baby here cheering on. Steve, it's so great to see all of our riders progressing throughout the years. It's so awesome to see. Pat Casey is also a proud papa. Matt Clausen is coming down. Yeah, we're waiting for Chad Curley. We witnessed those nose manual skills, the balance point redefining what could be done on a BMX. 
Curly getting a G for his efforts. And a big round of applause with the high five from Steve Van Doren. All right, big ups to our winners right there. All right, now I am gonna call out our Vans BMX Waffle Cup win women's final results. 10th through fourth place. We're gonna give a round of applause and then the top three finishers in a no particular order are gonna come on down because as we said, $75,000 in cold hard cash going out to our men and women. So how about it? Let's put it together. Coming in 10th place from Long Beach, Sarah Lampert. Ninth place all the way from Brazil, Duda Penso. In eighth place, our youngest rider at 13 years old, Sage Thunstrom. Coming in in seventh place from Medellin, Colombia, Danny Moran. In the sixth place from Liverpool, Emma Finnegan. Another young rider, 17 years old, and tail whipped her way to fifth place, Bethany Hedrick. And coming in in fourth place, she is a local. Give it up for Jesse Gregory. Now, in no particular order, the top three finishers, please come on down. Angie Marino, Nikki Wetzel, and Paris Benegas. All right, as I mentioned, $75,000 are on the line. Coming in in third place, scoring $5,000 in cold, hard cash. Give it up for Nikki Fuentes. Yeah, getting that beautifully designed DTM trophy right there with input from Denim Cox. All right, coming in second place, getting herself $6,000. Let's put it together for Angie Marino. All right, well, that means one rider came out on top today and getting her share of the 75K, I'm talking about $10,000, the one and only Paris Benigas. Wow, big ups to all of our women riders, absolutely bringing it, seeing the real-time progression of women's BMX freestyle. And that's the beautiful thing about the Vans BMX Waffle Cup. Everyone's invited, all inclusive. Can you hold those trophies up loud and proud? And let's bring it up, Huntington! All right, well, we are about to give out our awards for the men's.
Well, good thing Denim and also DTM Designs can get you repaired right there. One of a kind, unique trophies. All right, well, Huntington Beach, this is our Vans BMX Waffle Cup men's final results. I'm gonna read off 12th through fourth place. And then I'm gonna call up in no particular order the top three finishers. How about it, Huntington? Give it up for the San Diego rider, Gary Young. Coming in in 11th place, another San Diego rider, Chad Curley. Coming in 10th place, crossing the pond, we witnessed he went down hard and got back up with the big heart, Jordan Godwin. Coming in at ninth place, all the way from Australia. We saw him fast and loose, flying high, Josh Dovey. In eighth place, we witnessed not only a huge 720 in the best trick competition, but massive flares. His family's cheering him on, Ben Wallace. Seventh place, the Long Beach Rider, Big Hoppin' Brock Rayford. Sixth place, we witnessed him defy logic with the backwards rail manual, Devin Smiley. Fifth place went to the rider from Japan who had massive bar spin variations. I'm talking about four in a row. Rim Nakamura. And coming in fourth place, San Diego. I already know you love him. Give it up for Dennis Anderson. All right, in no particular order, top three riders. Johnny Rakes, Colin Varignac, and Kevin Peraza, please report to the principal's office. All right, as we said, in no particular order, we are going to find out the fate of this cold, hard cash. Vans stepped it up big time for the Vans BMX Waffle Cup, an all-inclusive event for all riders to be out here representing, doing their thing, and making it happen. Riders, if you wouldn't mind, please coming down to this side, and we are about to give out the purse. All right, the fate is about to be determined. Our four judges decided who our top three finishers are. Coming in third place with a very impressive long grind with a bar spin out. Let's give it up from the East Coast Transplant, Colin Varignac. Colin getting $5,000 in cold, hard cash and this beautifully designed Dan Thomas DTM trophy. Yeah, Colin. All right, second place. Second place and $6,000. Huntington, let's give it up for the tech Crank flipping wizard X up landing Johnny Rakes. <laughs> All right, well, with no further ado, his entire family. His side, his wife's side, and all together has been cheering him on on the course. He's got his own signature 114 shoe with Vans. He's Kevin Parraza! Yes, our top three riders right there getting those beautiful trophies, holding up the smiles and bringing it here at the Vans BMX Waffle Cup. How about it, riders? How about it, Huntington? Bring it up one more time for your top three finishers. 
Wow, what an amazing day of BMX. I, like, we just saw the, all the results right there. Like, the biggest the surprise for BMX me, I think you'll agree with me, was Johnny Rakus. He was an alternate. He was only in here because Garrett Reynolds or Felix Frankenberg, whichever order he was in, Ben Wallace and Johnny Rakus got in because of that. And he ended up getting on the podium right there. Just think about that. He just got $6,000. How awesome was that? Imagine if you were in that situation. Oh, he's made a name for himself now. It must. It was meant to be for him. Like that's amazing. He killed it, though. He definitely deserves it. That's like it's crazy. Kevin Peraza walking away with the win right there. That's our All boy. Right, We're both really big fans of Kevin Peraza. Kevin is you. such an amazing rider, Not and this just to adds to his Steve legacy to show, you know, he's just the, one of the best all-around riders. If not, they could be potentially the best all-around rider to ever do it in BMX. He's able to ride everything, skaters, and this course surfers, let him artists, live up to, you know, his bullets. So, like, what was, like, the trick? I mean, when, when like, Kevin landed something in his run where you're like, okay, that was a trick. Kevin's going to win today. Was there anything that happened like that for you? Because the one that, like, sticks in my head, like, it's like when he was doing the half year, stuff, for sure. That was big. But then also, it's like just his ability to be able to do that, like, flare family. out of the garbage, the, the dumpster as well. Like, I mean, like, Jerry, what sticks with you boy, after, like, Kevin's run? When you're going to walk around Jerry here or Batters walk away from here, you're going to tell people, like, yeah, Kevin killed it. What did he do? Like, what, what, how do you describe Bravo. what he did? Always getting behind I think the, the thing that sticks out for well. me, it's in, like replaying in my mind, is when he went up on the bloom thing, fakey, and then half cup down here out. And then, and then straight into the nosy five on the bank. Like, and out. everyone was cheering. Like, and like you said, out of the dumpster, the flare Justin, out, it's so mellow. Zach you really need to like get your momentum and pop to do that. Like, it's crazy. It's all around great rider. Like you said, he could win in any event. Like, that's how good he is. Talk about the women's top three right there. His design Nikki, and Angie, and Paris. McKay, I mean, Dan Paris Foley, is flying. I had a feeling Kelly that she was going to be close to the top right there. Andy also, you see Angie getting the podium and Nikki as well. And felt. like I said earlier, also, it was equal pay for everybody. So, team, Paris Rocco, and Scotty Kevin Kramer, walking around with $10,000 each. Vans doing it the right way. The making a $75,000 purse and not just giving it away money just in that event. They also did the best trick, which was so much fun to watch. Chad landing that nose wheelie up and across on that one. Like, that's like one of those tricks that we were talking about earlier. Like, if they gave us a certain amount of time to land a trick, there isn't even an amount of time. It's only him who's going to be able to land that trick. But then also, you know, the money that was being handed out for the awards. So, I mean, how, how, you feel, how did you feel when you saw our man Dustin win the Rat Chair Award? Oh, I'm stoked for him. Like, we were talking about it earlier. He's got a, a pure heart of gold, and he's so selfless, and he's always down to help. If someone's bike's broken, he, he's he got you. He's got your back. Um, he definitely deserves it. I'm stoked for him. Absolutely. And that was a thousand dollars right there. And what's so cool about that is Dustin has had some baby that's on his way. Yourself. So Thank he's got like a couple Darryl more months now. before he's going to be a father. Weekend. But what, and then we'll much. just go over the rest all of them. Cole Crew, got Dennis Anderson got thousand dollars. We also got the rider's choice. Dennis Anderson, once again, no surprise. I mean, he's the all around best BMX rider. Angie winning best trick. Chad Curley win best trick. Broadcast. Thank you, Vance. I mean, $75,000 purse. That is just unbelievable. I am so proud to be part of Vance for as long as I have been. And this has just been an amazing event. Thank you, Vance, for having BMX, supporting it for as and long ladies, as you have. And uh, you guys can look forward to the highlight video. Photo. It's going to be released the on their channel in the next couple of days. Uh, it's definitely Thank going to be ladies. worth it to watch because the guys that we're filming today are going to make it look awesome. So from Scotty Kramer and Natalia Diem, we just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed spending the time time with us and we'll see you guys soon.